Good evening. It's 702. We'll call the meeting to order. All members are present. Uh, I will note that this evening uh, the town manager has uh, important family commitments and uh, won't be here. So in his place we have the assistant town manager, Jeff Hull. We'll start with the transmitting of Treasury Warrants 33, 33A, 34, and 34A. Do we have a motion? So moved. I'll second. Second. Uh, Maiden seconded. Anything further? All in favor? It's unanimous. <coughs> we also have uh, minutes to approve for a meeting date of February 8, 2010. Do we have a motion? I'll make the motion that we approve the minutes February 8, 2010. Second. Maiden seconded. Anything further? All in favor? It's unanimous. Our first scheduled appointment this evening is scheduled for 7 o'clock, and it's the recognition of Cameron Ewan of the Wilmington Middle School, and he's the award recipient of the Massachusetts Municipal Association Statewide 6th Grade Essay Contest. Cameron, good evening. And I'd invite uh, Cameron, if you'd like to have a seat up here at the table, and if uh, a couple members of the family would like to join him, that's fine. If not, doesn't want us up there. Doesn't want you up there. <laughs> it's an independent young guy. Uh, we certainly want to give Cameron a, uh, an opportunity to read the essay that he submitted, but just for informational purposes, um, for the last four years, the MMA has sponsored this statewide sixth grade essay contest. Uh, I've been privileged enough to speak at the Wilmington Middle School uh, on those occasions, and, and the town manager likewise has. Uh, there's an assembly, and the sixth grade gets a, an opportunity to ask questions about local government. Uh, in preparation for the essay that they prepare and send in. And it's uh, quite impressive what Cameron pulled off this year and that there were over 2,200 entries statewide. Uh, it's also nice to know that uh, Cameron is the second recipient from the town of Wilmington. Uh, Matthew Frigeau was a second place recipient back in 2008. As uh, part of this uh, recognition, the Mass Municipal Association will be uh, sending a savings bond to Cameron and uh, they don't entrust the savings bond with us, but we do have some, uh, uh, some uh, different pieces of recognition that we'd like to present to Cameron later on tonight. But without uh, any further ado, Cameron, if you'd like to read your essay, we'd love to hear it. If I were elected leader of my community, I would make a difference by having a cultural awareness month featuring different events to bring people together in order to have a better understanding of one another. This month would be dedicated to teaching people in the community about the similarities and difference, differences in cultures. If there, is more, if there is more understanding, people will get along better. You can get along, you can learn about cultures from books, but you can also learn a, learn a lot by meeting different people in the community. Monthly cooking demonstrations can teach people how to cook food from different cultures. Everyone likes to eat, so maybe this is a good way to start. People can ask questions, meet people of different cultures, and learn how, how they do other things. They could discover that they do things in the same way. They might learn a new technique for doing similar things. Sporting events. Sporting events are another way to, to an, sporting events are another way to teach cultural awareness. As a leader, I would organize a week-long sporting event where each each sport played would represent a different country. Everyone in the community can participate. It will bring people of different cultures together and everyone will have fun. This idea is similar to the Olympics. A cultural parade is another way to show cultural awareness. Clothes can represent things from various countries, such as clothing and music. During a parade, we could have ethnic food stands. People in the community can taste food from different cultures. Cultural, cultural awareness is how people will learn to get along in our community, in our world. They may want to learn a new language. Learning about cultures will benefit us when traveling to places for vacation or traveling to places for business trips. The more cultural awareness we have, the more prepared we will be in an ever-changing world. That was a great job, Cameron, and uh, at this time, I would like to take a couple of items and present them to you. Cameron. 
if you want to join me up here. The first thing is from the Mass Municipal Association, who, uh, as you know, ran the competition and who judged the essays. And I just wanted to read a card that was uh, sent to you from the uh, Mass Municipal Association and read it for the folks who are in the audience and also present to you a copy of the Beacon. And this is a publication uh, that goes to a number of over 6,000 local officials. Um, and your essay has been printed in this publication. So the MMA wanted to make sure that we provided you a whole bunch of copies for you. Okay, so let me give you that and shake your hand. And I also folks um, what the MMA's Ellen Schumacher had, had written to you. Uh, and this is in cursive writing, so if I struggle with a word or two, we'll figure it out. Uh, dear Cameron, congratulations on winning third place in the MMA's sixth grade essay contest. Over 2,200 essays were received. Your essay on cultural awareness really stood out. The judges were impressed with your well-written essay and your understanding of community. In close, please find eight copies of our magazine, The Beacon. This is sent to over 6,000 local officials and hundreds of state officials. Please find your essay on page 20. Hope you enjoy your hometown presentation. Best of luck to you and keep writing. And that's from Ellen Schoolmarker. And, um, and then in the back it says, P.S., uh, you should get your savings bond in March with a smile. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm going to put this on top of that stack right there. And maybe as I grab the other one, you can can put that on the table so we don't uh, overload you. I'll also give you this box to get this home, okay? This is a smart looking plaque from the Mass Municipal Association. Thank you, Beth. All right, let me read it first, and then we'll make sure you get a photo up with your new plaque, all right? <laughs> Massachusetts Municipal Association Statewide Sixth Grade Essay Contest. If I were elected leader of my community, I would make a difference by. And the third place winner is Cameron Ewan, and it's signed by Jeffrey D. Nutting, Franklin Town Administrator, the president of the MMA, and Jeffrey Beckwith, the MMA Executive Director. So why don't you hold that for a photo? Have a big smile. And then this plaque that I'd like to read is given to you on behalf of the Town of Wilmington. It's a certificate of re recognition presented to Cameron Ewan. And it's for his achievement in being selected as an award recipient in the Massachusetts Municipal Association Statewide Essay Contest. And it's presented to you on this 22nd day of February, 2010. And that's from the Board of Select. So here you go. You can hold that one, Cameron. We'll just take a couple of moments to let people get through the door. <coughs> Seeing as our next uh, appointment item is a public hearing scheduled for 7.15 and it's not quite 7.15. Why don't we move to communications and then we'll revert to our agenda items. Okay.
Uh, the first item under correspondence uh, that I'll uh, take up is a couple of letters that were sent to uh, one uh, being to uh, Representative Charles Murphy and the second being to Senator Bruce Tarr. Uh, this, uh, these letters are an express uh, appreciation of uh, their testimony um, regarding Bill 2142 and it reads as follows. I'm writing on behalf of the Wilmington Board of Selectmen to express our appreciation for your active support of Senate number 2442. As you know, the legislation, if enacted, would greatly assist the residents of Wilmington by exempting the town from liability with respect to the closure of the Maple Meadow landfill. We are hopeful that with your support, the legislature will endeavor to adopt this important piece of legislation so vital to the interests of our community. We are especially grateful that you have rearranged your schedule on Tuesday, February 9, 2010, in order to offer favorable testimony at the bill's hearing before the Joint Committee on Municipalities and Regional Government. Once again, thank you for appearing and speaking on behalf of the Town of Wilmington. We appreciate your continued good work for the benefit of the community. I would just note for the board that um, we, we did receive uh, word of that hearing uh, late in the previous week, uh, I want to say Thursday the 4th, perhaps Friday the 5th. Um, and so we, we uh, <coughs> were able to uh, contact uh, Attorney Foskett from Deutsch Williams, who attended the hearing, and I attended the hearing also. Um, and uh, as, as the board will remember, uh, the legislation that the uh, letter refers to is the request for special legislation which was passed by town meeting at last year's uh, annual town meeting in 2009. Uh, I would also note that um, uh, Representative Maselli contacted me. Uh, he certainly wanted the town and, uh, and the uh, residents of Wilmington to know that he also appeared on that day and offered testimony and we certainly appreciate uh, the unanimous support of our legislative delegation and we'll be sure to have the manager uh, send out a letter of thanks to Representative Maselli as well. Um, so if there's any questions or comments, certainly we'll field them, but otherwise it's uh, wait and see if the uh, joint committee reports favorably on the bill and then ultimately see if it's enacted. Do you have a sense of timelines for that, that aspect of it, that part of it, the joint committee? Uh, I did not, but we'll circle back with our legislative delegation and see what they think. Thank you. Uh, the next item on correspondence Actually, is... Actually, Mr. Hall, I think we can um, continue with our agenda items. Uh, is Michael Cronin here? Hi, Mr. Cronin. Uh, our 715 appointment is with Michael Cronin, the manager of Pepper Dining, Inc., doing business as Chili's Grill and Bar. And it's regarding a public hearing relative to the request of Pepper Dining, Inc., DBA, Chili's Bar and Grill, to obtain an all-alcohol license for a restaurant for property located at 269 Main Street. Uh, good evening, Mr. Cronin. If, if you could, take a seat at the front table. Good evening, gentlemen. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, if you could, um, I know that the application pretty much speaks for itself, but if you could give us some background uh, on what brings you before us and um, why you think the board should uh, approve the application. Sure. My name is Sean Leonard. I'm actually the area director for Chili's here in uh, the Massachusetts area. I, uh, I'm responsible for the, the, the area from Andover pretty much down through the, uh, the Hingham Mass. Uh, I've been with the company uh, for 13 years, uh, started as an assistant manager, and now I'm director of this area. Uh, Michael Cronin is um, he is currently my general manager, managing partner in my Andover store. He has held uh, the Massachusetts uh, license in his name in the town of Andover for over three years with no uh, incidents incidents as all in his in his place. And I'm pretty much here for you know support of Michael for tonight. And any questions you might you know have to direct to me as far as you know what our company is all about. But I think as far as Michael's concerned, I'd like him to speak as to you know his um, his credentials as to. A license holder in the hopefully in the town of Wilmington. 
I've been in the uh, hospitality industry for over 12 years, going on 13 actually this year. Um, I've held a liquor license in Danover for the last three and a half years. Uh, I was a general manager at the Salem, New Hampshire location uh, for about six months before that. And I was actually um, an assistant manager with Chili's for three years before I became a general manager. Before that, I ran a couple nightclubs in Boston on Lansdowne Street um, for about two and a half years, I would say, down there. So. Hope to uh, hope to be able to move into the Wilmington uh, location. <laughs> okay, and just as a point of clarification, the uh, premises that we're talking about at 269 Main Street is the uh, same location that uh, Ruby Tuesdays previously had come before correct. the board. Correct. 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 Uh, why don't we entertain questions or comments from the board, then move to the audience and uh, Mr. Bob had done. Uh, actually, if we could, Mr. Hull. Uh, we do have um, uh, notices, uh, correspondence from um, Michael Bagonis, uh, Chief of Police. Uh, he indicates, upon review, the Wilmington Police Department recommends approval of the alcohol license submitted by uh, Angela T. Rotella Garzon, licensing specialist on behalf of uh, Pepper Dining, Inc., DBA Chili's Grill and Bar. Uh, this recommendation is based upon our understanding uh, the purpose of the license request is to serve all alcohol beverages in a restaurant having a seating capacity of no less than 100 persons located at 269 Main Street, Wilmington, uh, respectfully submitted uh, <coughs> Michael Bagonis, Chief of Police. Uh, we have a uh, memorandum from the uh, building inspector, uh, Al Spaulding. I have reviewed the above mentioned application and have no outstanding zoning issues. And then finally, from the health director, Shelley Newhouse, uh, I recommend approval of Pepper Dining, Inc., DBA, Chili's Grill and Bar for a license to serve all alcoholic beverages in a restaurant having a seating capacity of not less than 100 persons. Questions or comments? Yeah, I have a question, if I may. Um, there was a note in here as of January 26th that there was a, a, a check for $2,000 for the license fee that had at that point not been received. Has that been received by now? Yes. It has been. Check. Um, elsewhere in the documentation, I saw that the plans involved uh, remodel. The word remodel was used a couple of times. It's, Which, it's, it's brand new construction. Okay. Yeah. We're going to construct a, a building on that former site there to all, you know, town specifications. Our, our, our investment in that is, you know, somewhere in the neighborhood of $1.2 to $1.3 million, obviously, falling everything and that the town needs us to do per code, per, you know, reputable builder. And uh, it, it's a brand new construction. Just out of curiosity, was, that, was there a purposeful use of the word remodel? Here it is on Form 43. Description of licensed premises, remodel one story freestanding restaurant to 5,093 square feet. The word remodel just jumped into my head and it doesn't affect my opinion of it. I just wondered no. why it was. I, I would probably say it's just somewhat of a typo there. I mean, there's nothing there uh, I, to remodel, you know, so. Um, could I ask you to orient? We saw a floor plan of the restaurant, but where is the main entrance going to be as if, if I was a uh, uh, potential customer? If I was to. And again, these things are still worked out in, with the town as far as the, the prototype that we have. The prototype that we have um, selected for this property is uh, is not a prototype that we've ever built before. It, it'll be our newest, latest, greatest. Uh, as according, I think, to the way the town has to do the uh, easements from the street and whatever, I think the building will sit um, so that the front door of the building will sit. Um, if Market Basket is, is here on the main side of Route 38, the front door will sit, that would be pretty much the side of the building, and the front entrance would be pretty much in, on the parking lot side on the front. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, which I anticipated. Is there, there's no uh, arrangement for a drive-through pickup or nope. anything like that? You nope. don't really have the resources. We have, we have, a, to, we have a to go area, but that okay. all it is is three spots and a door okay. that, we, that we delegate. No outdoor seating areas anticipated no seating. for the no. future? Um, okay, that was, those are some of the things that jumped out. I appreciate your answers. Thank you. Anything else from the board? Questions or comments from the audience? Hearing none, uh, we can entertain a motion. I would point out uh, if it's the board's uh, inclination to grant the request, uh, you may recall that because the um, 
uh, proposed establishment is within a certain geographic distance from a place of worship it requires a certain determination by the board uh, that determination had in fact been made when the previous applicant was before us <clears throat> and I'd ask the town manager to uh, include that language uh, in the memorandum that he gave us in the event uh, the board does move to approve the request so with that do we have a motion I'll make the motion that uh, we um, Pepper Dining and do, um, doing business as Chili's Grill and Bar to obtain an uh, alcohol license for a restaurant property located at 269 Main Street. Second. Okay, made and second. And, and um, can we take that motion to further state that a, and further that a determination is made that the license is not detrimental to the spiritual activities of the church located on Bridge Lane? Is yes. that okay? Yes. Second. Okay, motion's been made and seconded. Anything further? All in favor? It's unanimous. Uh, before you go, do you have the green cards from the uh, mailings? Uh, oh, they were already sent back to us. Okay. Yep. Very good. You're taking care of yeah. all that. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Great. What's your timeline for construction and all that? I meant to ask that. We, we pretty much, if all goes well with the town and, and everything, we, we would look to start construction somewhere around April. Uh, be able to do orientation and hiring sometime in August and then probably six weeks after that would be grand opening So probably sometime late September early October if all goes well with all goes well. Yeah <laughs> Good luck. Thank you. Thank you. Very good. Thank you. Good, good luck. Night. Thank and, you um, The uh, town manager's office would have the license uh, that office will hold it. You can contact them Just make sure that they have everything they need. Very, Very good. good. Thanks Thank again. You. Thank you. Our next agenda item is with Frank West regarding a request of the Wilmington Company of Minutemen to use the town common on various Tuesday evenings during the summer to conduct drilling and marching exercises. Good evening. Good evening, gentlemen. Uh, for the record, I'm Frank West. I'm the current captain of the Wilmington Minutemen. Uh, with me, I have uh, the company sergeant, Bill Robinson, who is also our company safety officer, uh, Karen West, who is the company adjutant sergeant, uh, also in attendance is uh, Bill Hitchcock, who is a private in the Wilmington Company, current captain of Burlington Company of Minutemen, and brigadier general in the Mass Council of Minutemen and Militia. Uh, Michael Bodner, who is a private in the Minutemen, in the Wilmington Minutemen, and one of our junior members, Frankie West, who is a uh, member of our company as well. And no, he does not fire a musket. A <laughs> uh, couple of things I just wanted to bring before you. I figured that the last time that the Minutemen were formally before the Board of Selectmen was probably about seven or, seven or eight years ago when uh, the Minutemen audited uh, the late Dot Lafionitis uh, with a uh, emeritus uh, uh, membership into our group. Um, so I figured while I'm here, I might as well just give you a brief overview and entertain any general questions about the group as well. Uh, just so you know, we were reactivated as a militia group by the Board of Selectmen back in 1968. Uh, our meeting place is the, in back of the Harrington Tavern at the uh, Miniman headquarters, and we meet the second Thursday of the month at 8 o'clock in the evening. Uh, for the record, we're a non-political group. Uh, basically, what we are is we're a, uh, we're a group of individuals, both men, women, children, that uh, we, we, are, we premise on honoring the original patriots who helped form our nation from the beginning. Uh, again, we're family oriented. Some people think of the Minute Men as a quote men's organization of sorts. And uh, for those who have seen us in parades, we have a number of families that are involved. As I said, there's men, boys, girls, women. Uh, once in a while, we have a we used to have a company goose that was in a couple of our parades. Um, one of the things that's, that's uh, incumbent on us is safety. Again, I mentioned that uh, Sergeant Robinson is a safety officer. Um, so that any time before we step off on any type of a parade route or reenactment route, uh, Bill will check, certainly check to make sure that every weapon that we use, and, and again, I, I call our firearms weapons because they are, they are in fact weapons. They are, they can, they can, uh, they do fire gunpowder and they could fire a projectile. Uh, the only difference between our muskets of today and muskets of then is a, uh, a small safety um, attachment that goes to the, to just protect our eyes. But I just I wanted to mention that because we do uh, take safety very seriously. 
Uh, we, we go to a, uh, a Mass Council sponsored event, which is a musket safety and uh, cannon safety course. And we, all, we get certified by that, that organization so that we're not just a bunch of people that just haphazardly fire guns and fire cannons. We, we understand and we're told how dangerous a weapon they are. Uh, first of all, what I'd one thing I'd like to do is I'd like to invite uh, each member of the Board of Selectmen, and uh, if I could pass those, those Mike? Yes. Those are uh, invitations to our installation of offices, which will be held on Sunday, March 14th at 2 o'clock in the afternoon. Uh, certainly, Jeff, I, I had actually made this out to uh, Mr. Kyra's town manager. Certainly, you and your family are more than welcome to attend if you're available. Uh, the event will be officiated by Jim Banda, who has officiated the event for many years, and he was actually a founding member of the, of the Women to Men and Men and helped put the, put the organization back together in uh, 1968. I know several times, and we'll thank Selectman Lepore, as uh, he has come to several of our, of our uh, installations. A few of the events that we do is that uh, one of the events that we do is we'll do a midnight march to Concord, and you're all welcome to join us at 2 o'clock in the morning <laughs> as we uh, march from Wilmington 18 miles down to uh, Miriam's Corner in Concord. Um, I didn't hear anyone volunteer for that, but uh, we have actually in the past couple of years, we've had uh, a number of Boy Scouts that have attended, and if there's any Scouts that are interested in, uh, jo in joining our march, feel free to uh, contact us. Some of, the, some of the Scouts have marched so far, and uh, that's a great thing. Uh, we do a North, an old North Church evening, sort, uh, evening ser service down in Boston, and we're also one of the uh, invited guests of the Ancient and Autumn Artillery Company as part of their drumhead election and parade on Boston Common. And that's the oldest, I believe it's the oldest, uh, one of the oldest organizations, military organizations in the United States. Uh, and the banquet is wonderful afterwards. Uh, as you're probably aware, town meeting, we're the ones, we're the group that brings in the flag, uh, which is a great honor for our, for our group to be able to do so, to open the town meeting. Uh, we do a flag retirement ceremony in June where we, during the year we collect old and uh, worn flags and retire them in a proper service. Instead of just having people thrown away in a, in a basket or a bar, you know, in the trash, we make sure that they're retired by burning. We do not say we burn flags, we always say we retire by burning. Uh, two locations for that people can bring flags is one right here over at Town Hall and the other at the post office. And certainly if anyone came to headquarters, they could do that also. Um, we're, we're available. We normally do the Memorial Day service both here in Wilmington, the Memorial Day Parade both here in Wilmington and Tewksbury. And we also are part of the Memorial Day service at the cemetery where we uh, fire a cannon salute in memory of the uh, fallen veterans. Uh, we've been to school groups in the past, and certainly if any school group would like to have us, we can do a half hour presentation, a different structure for different age groups for uh, just you know a little bit of colonial life and, and uh, that. Uh, the, you know, that type of presentation. Uh, Fourth of July, we're in Boston, and uh, the reason why we're in Boston is we, we do a parade that starts out at the, uh, the City Hall Plaza and is, ch is headed by the Mayor of Boston, uh, Tom Menino. And what we also, what we do is, is that we go to the Old State, and we march to the Old State House where they have a reading of the Declaration of Independence as it was read in July of 1776. Along the way, the parade stops at Granary Burial Ground and the mayor and his dignitaries, and Wilmington, and only Wilmington, gets out of the parade march, and we become the mayor's honor guard, and we fire uh, ceremonial salutes to several of the patriots that the mayor lays wreaths on at the, uh, at the uh, burial ground. Uh, we also, several times, we fire cannon salutes at, the, uh, at Castle Island to, uh, uh, as the USS Constitution turn, uh, turns around at Castle Island. And that's a good honor for us. We're one of the few companies that actually does that. And as many of you are aware, we do the uh, Fourth of July closing program. We work with various groups in town, the Wilmington Historical Commission. A lot of times when the tavern is open, we have several of our, a couple of our folks, who, uh, our members will be there in period uniform to uh, you know, kind of give a colonial feel to the colonial tavern. Uh, we've helped out with, it, with events with the Historical Commission, such as the Butters Farm and, and other events. Uh, for the past couple of years, we've had a uh, supplement to the town crier uh, on Memorial Day, and this year we're uh, we're paying tribute to local heroes, and certainly uh, we think that's a great organization. And being not a military organization, we are not. We are a group of civilians, 
even though some of us have served in the military, such as Sergeant Robinson, his former Air Force, and several others that have been involved in uh, various uh, services. I just want to make it, make it clear that we are we are not a military group. We are a civilian group that we we reenact as if we were the military back in colonial times. Uh, we're in various parades around. We're in Boston, Austin, Brighton, Woburn, Tewksbury, kind of have musket will travel. Uh, we're good standing members of the Massachusetts uh, Mass Council of, of Militia, and we work closely with them for various events. And believe it or not, being a colonial group, we have a website, womensandminutemen.com. Uh, that being said, just to give you a roundabout of you know a wealth of events that you know such a small group does, what we're looking to do is, is that we're looking to make ourselves look that much better when we're on parade routes and doing marching. Uh, again, we represent the town of Wilmington. We represent the colonial history of Wilmington. When we go to different parades and events, we carry a guide on, which is actually a flag that says Wilmington Minutemen. So when people see us on a parade route, they know who the Wilmington Minutemen are. Uh, in doing so, what, we, what we've been trying to do is we've been trying to see if we can secure a location where we can do some practice drilling. And what I mean by drilling is basically marching so that we know which foot is our left, which one is our right. and. Um, and we just want to make sure that when we march that we are rep well representing our town, our community, as well as us as individuals. Um, the location that we thought of was the town common was to do some of this uh, marching and drilling was specifically because what we didn't want to do is, is that we had looked at various fields around town, we looked at schools, and I know some people have an issue with the fact that they're, they're, you know, we would have a gun or guns, plural, on a school field. Again, we would have absolutely no gunpowder, so there would be no way to ignite any of the any of the weapons, but you know, we would be doing maybe mock firing up in the air as we do it in a parade route. Um, and the um, we also looked at the common being a central location in the town for a variety of reasons. One, it's long and flat, and we figured on Tuesday nights, again, we, we probably consider probably about you know, maybe four or five various Tuesday nights during the summer, to, uh, to practice our, our, uh, our parade marching and also make ourselves look a little bit better out in the real field. Um, the other thing that we like about the common is the fact that it's long and it's flat. And other than, um, as far as we're, we're concerned, we're not looking for any exclusive use of the common. We're just looking to be part of, you know, be, be uh, allowed to use the common as far as uh, any of the marching that we do. Uh, we're not looking to set up any type of tents or encampments or have any uh, battles or any, any of those type things. And certainly, like I said, the, any of the, the guns would be for ceremonial type purposes. Um, the other thing also is, is that we figure that the common is a good visible spot for us to do our marching. I know I did talk to uh, you know, various people, including a couple of selectmen, and a couple of uh, you know, people in general thought that uh, you know, being visible might attract us to getting a, co a couple of members. And being a small group, we're always looking to uh, a you know get new members and b make more people aware about what what our group is and what we do. Uh, that being said, you know we understand that the common is public property, and uh, we're not looking to in any way damage the common or, or ruin it. Uh, we're just looking to basically you know do a little bit of field marching, probably an hour, an hour and a half. On a, on a Tuesday night because we figured that that's a, that's a night that we don't see any real use of the common as far as anything public. But certainly if there was any, any events going on, such as Fourth of July activities, or um, I think one of the schools has a, an end of school outing or something like that, I'm not sure what night that would be on, but certainly if there was a scheduled event or any event where there would be an attraction of a lot of people, that's not something we're looking for. You know, we're looking basically on a, you know, basically to have, quite, have some quiet time up there. Um, that being said, I don't know if anyone has any questions about either our group, uh, any of the membership of our group, or the requests that we're looking at. Uh, certainly, we'll go to uh, the board and the in the audience. Um, we, we did get a, uh, a memorandum from uh, the town manager. Um, I'd ask uh, I'd asked him specifically to uh, review the request and. Uh, to uh, give us a recommendation. If you could, Jeff, uh, go, go through sure. that recommendation with us, please. Uh, 
<clears throat> I'm writing a response to the request of Chairman Newhouse to provide the board with a recommendation on the request of the Wilmington Minutemen to use the town common for drilling and marching exercises and also to assess the availability of alternative locations. As the board is aware, responsibility for determining the use of the town common is vested with the board of selectmen. Traditionally, approval for the use of the town common is given for special town events and limited to the extent possible to events notwithstanding the 4th of July activities that are passive social and recreational uh, activities. I believe that the use of the common for the purpose requested is inconsistent with past use as these kinds of activities have not been allowed in the past. Uh, there is no irrigation system at the t uh, common and repeated marching and drilling exercises would contribute to the wear and tear of the grass and potentially damage the town's most visible and prominent public park. I believe there are other suitable locations in town that would meet the criteria of the Minutemen and enable them to conduct repeat practices over a period of time. I would be happy to meet with Mr. West to discuss these locations, which include but are not limited to Water Department property on Andover Street, property at the Harnden Tavern, Wilmington Town Park, and the Whitfield School site. In addition, depending upon other scheduled activities, Rotary Park and certain school sites may be available. I trust this information is of assistance. Yeah, and and uh, from my perspective, and I, I, I know that we communicated briefly, Frank. First of all, I appreciate the, the work that uh, that the group does, and I, you know, I'm one of those people that is always mindful of the fact that volunteers make this town run, and uh, certainly your group is amongst that. Uh, uh, that great number of people who volunteer the services in town and uh, I very much want to provide a place that is uh, conducive to what you're trying to accomplish but I've, I've always viewed the town common as kind of the, the you know like the game field of certain social and recreational events mm -hmm. um, so for example if the if the high school band were uh, were to request that they practice there I'd take the position you know, no, it's really not the, the appropriate location. Uh, we certainly uh, would make the, the common uh, area available for special functions for the town. But um, so that that's you know that's where I come from. And certainly, uh, as I indicated to you, that's how you know, the board uh, this is the time to listen and to hash it out. From my perspective, I would uh, support your your um, request at any number of locations and. From my perspective, it seems to me that the, the Rotary Park and or the Whitfield would accomplish uh, many of the things that you are looking to accomplish. Maybe there's things about those sites that I don't maybe appreciate, but um, they seem to be visible and to provide the flat surface and plenty of area and the flag area to. A couple you know, of things just to, just to go on, if, if I may, Mr. Chairman, uh, based on your comments and also the town manager's comments. Uh, one of the places that we had done some drilling in the past was the, the Hundred Tavern property. Uh, certainly with our headquarters being located right there, obviously we all know where it is. Uh, the problem with that is, is that it's really not conductive and conducive to what we're actually looking to do. And the reason being is, is that when you, if you actually look at the tavern property, it's not straight and it's not flat and it's not long. See, one of the things is we, when we do a parade, for example, like when we do the Wilmington Parade, We'll march down Main Street, and then when we go to take a left onto Church, what we do is there's actually a formation called a wheel. So we actually, instead of just kind of you know ducking around and, and flowing down the street, we actually like to walk forward and actually turn in proper in proper sequence. And and that you know the, to be honest with you, the tavern we, we tried it a couple of times, and I, I think everybody all the gentlemen that are here were uh, um, were were not satisfied that 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 you know that's why again we were looking for that as a primary. Uh, I did talk to Mr. Kyra about the potential of the Whitfield, and you know, he had mentioned the front of the Whitfield, and I had asked him about the back, and he said, well, the back is really being used for a lot of sporting events. And again, it's not long, because a lot of times, and again, you know, I don't know if you've ever marched with any organization. I know you march obviously with the selectmen and parades, but as far as marching in a formal formation when we're actually trying to actually go a length of space in a formal setting, you really need a, a good breadth of, of space to do that. Um, as far as the, the amount of people that we're talking, certainly, you know, if you're looking at the band, you're looking at probably, you know, 100 members of the band or something like that. We're probably looking uh, on a given day, I'd say maybe 10, 15, possibly 20 people tops. Um, they'd be members of the company. It's not like we'd be inviting other groups or anything like that. 
it would just be our membership that, that's looking really to march. Uh, certainly if we've got a member or two as a result of it, certainly we'd, we'd, we'd invite them to march. Um, we're not doing anything, uh, I'd say, aggressive on, on, the, on, the, uh, on, the, on the common. Uh, and you know, quite frankly, some of, the, some of the, uh, the thought pattern we had was in the middle walkway, the paved walkway, is actually pretty ideal for one of the one of the events that we do, which is town meeting. And it's kind of you know the the aisle way on town meeting is about the same width as the aisle way in the on the uh, paved area that on the on the common. So some of our focus would be that. Uh, also, the other thing, real quick, would be when we do the July Fourth act uh, closing ceremony. That's again done in a paved surface up behind the uh, behind the uh, gazebo. So. I don't. I don't know that we'd be doing a tremendous amount of walking, or marching, shall we say, on the um, on the actual grass. But certainly, like the school kids walk on it every day, and and, and kids throw the frisbee on it, you know, a, a chunk of the time, you know, we would be walking on it. But I don't think we'd be doing. I don't, I don't think we'd be marching to the to the to the extent that that maybe either yourself or Mr. Cairo might think we are, and certainly the group size is not that large. I guess to, to that, and I don't want to dominate the time with the board, but uh, just in response to that, I, I would think that if the, the numbers, uh, as you've described them, we, we have to have another place that's conducive to what you're doing without setting the precedent of having drilling exercises and, and marching on the common. Uh, and especially if, if most of that is going to be on some of the paved surfaces, again, we, we have to have the space available for you to do that, and ideally in a space that's visible for you. But um, I, I, I have to believe that, that's, uh, that that space exists. But uh, any other questions or comments from the board? Yeah. Frank, with the uh, Swain, Swain School site, I think we, did, um, even though we took the building down, I think we grassed that area. Would that site be suitable? Again, that, that probably I would say no, Ray, and, and the reason being is, is that although it's a grassed area, well, we're actually trying to march as if, you know, like remember as an example, like when you're marching during the selectman meetings, you're always marching straight and thinking straight. And I would say that the grassed area of the, of the, uh, of the, of the area, the, the, the grassed area in the front of the Swain is probably about, I'd say about 150 feet maybe. I know when, I know we have to, when we, when we pull, we have to pull a permit to pull the cannon there. Uh, for the Memorial Day exercise, uh, Veterans Day exercise, rather, excuse me. I think it's 150 feet, Paul. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Which really isn't isn't all that much. I mean, we'll, we, you know, again, we're looking for an area that this, there could be a stretch of land, because you know we're looking to get probably about you know say two across, and maybe about five five going down. But we also have an honor guard of four, and then maybe you know like the captain would be in the front. So we're, so we're looking even our, even at just our parade formation. Is probably about I'd say from about 50 feet from I'll the captain to the mm -hmm. last marcher. Mm -hmm. yes. mm -hmm. I'm just trying to compromise, in, you know, for you people tonight. Um, do respect you. Do put a lot of time in. You are one of the oldest um, organizations in the town. So what I'm trying to say then, why couldn't you work out something on the Swain parking lot itself, the Fourth of July parking lot? Seems like you got the depth there and you got the width. You're, well, you're, you're within 100 feet of where you want to be. Um, well, I think I'm sorry. Okay, continue. You know, I don't see it's going to create any create any problem there as far as you know being across from it. It's all paved, um, and and. Uh, well, I think the issue with that raise, I think we'd want to stay away from a parking lot, and the reason being is is that we don't know what activities. Are, you know, there's going to be cars coming in and out of the parking lot, and we're looking not to get in the way of anything. I mean, certainly, as you know, even during the summer, the, the high school is used for different events. The 4th of July building itself is used for different events. And, and, and again, being in a parking lot, I don't think would really be a, an area that we'd want to be, only because, like I said, it would be a danger. I think it would be a safety well, issue. I could say is Rotary Park is up the street, but the problem I see with Rotary Park is during the summer months, you have T-ball. Well, the other thing also with Rotary Ray is, is that, to be honest with you, it's not, it's not terribly large. And the other issue is that, as far as a long straightaway is what we're looking at, okay? Um, and the, other, the only other issue that, the issue that we had with Rotary Park is, again, if the, if the 
kids are going to be playing baseball. And again, that's a separate field. But you know, we had an issue thinking that if kids are going to be using the baseball field for any type of a formal game, and you got the parents seeing us with a bunch of guns, and again, I, I don't that's want to emphasize. That's why I'm you know. saying, basically, when I said T-ball, I'm basically saying it's going to be too crowded on, on this season for you people to be there at the same time. I mean, that's what I'm basically saying. Rotary Park is going to have to come off the board. Yeah. The other thing also that I wouldn't want to touch on is that I spoke to uh, Chief Bagonis, uh, Police Chief Bagonis, and I know um, uh, uh, Town Manager Mr. Kyra did also. Uh, and not to put you know words in his mouth, I mean, he certainly didn't want to comment on the location because that's not his jurisdiction. But I did want to let you know that he didn't seem to have a problem with what we were trying to do as far as, uh, you know, the, the type of event that we're, that we're planning. And again, his jurisdiction is, is public safety, not public uh, grounds. And I, I don't know if you have a formal recommendation from him, uh, Chairman Newhouse, or not. No, frankly, you know, um, would have asked for it. From my perspective, uh, there's basically three um, three different entities that have jurisdiction over a location like this. Uh, the, the schools, uh, school department, obviously they have jurisdiction over school sites, uh, board of selectmen over the town common, and the town manager over other public areas. So my, my real focus has been, uh, notwithstanding you know many of the points that you make, that we're still talking about, you know, I understand that maybe it'll take some work finding a location that serves your purposes that doesn't have some kind of scheduling conflict but from my standpoint you know Tuesday evenings in the summer which is when we're trying to make this available to the general public you know that that's that's really what we're there for other than some of those special functions that we you know that we uh, give permission to do so I, I just again if it were if if the uh, Minutemen were coming to us with the request for a sp specific function there in my mind that's a that's a different request than using the grounds as a practice field for, you know, so many summer evenings on a Tuesday night. Um, so I just, and I, I believe notwithstanding some of the specific items you've raised, um, certainly there's some suggestions here that might, that might work for you. I expect that, that uh, they could. Uh, even if that list of sites doesn't do the trick for you, I believe that uh, if you sat down with the manager, he would help you find a location that would accommodate what you're trying to do. It might not be your, your top choice, but it would, it would uh, I, I believe he'd make the effort and find a place that would uh, be suitable for you without creating that kind of precedent. Uh, sorry, go ahead. Thank you, my guy. I don't mean to be like a Monday morning quarterback. I usually look at the packet over the weekend. This weekend was a very difficult, busy weekend for me. And I did return a phone call to a member of the Minuteman that seeked out some uh, some information. It might have been quarter 11 at night, but I did contact somebody and, and had some uh, conversation. I'm, I'm looking at this now with the manager's recommendation, but I mean, I personally didn't have a big issue talking about the town common, but the one issue I did have was obviously I know those weapons aren't live. And I would believe that, you know, some folks in the area may take a look upon that, and I think the police department would get a call if somebody's driving down and they see a musket. Even though we know it's not a live weapon, we have to take that into consideration. And I'm looking, and then I'm looking at the packet here of other alternatives. And one of them I see, obviously the answer's already come in clear, is Rotary Park. And I'm saying to myself, you get the police department across the street, so in Rotary Park's a decent-sized park, and I think it would accommodate your need, but you're saying it's not. And I think that would be some type of happy medium. You know, at Rotary Park. I mean, it's obviously the police department's there, and I, you're talking about the people practicing and the, the weapons. No matter where you go in town, you're going to see a musket. You know, I once again, we know it's not live weapons, but the average folk walking down today, and I did discuss this. Hey, that was my only concern. You know, do I have a big issue with being a town common? Yay and nay, but not a big issue with me, but that was my only big concern with that. And obviously, Rotary Park's not an alternative. That's what you're saying. I think it would be a suitable area. One site I might throw out, and the town manager is always in touch base with Textron. Right across the street on Lowell Street, Textron is a huge field. And they really don't utilize that field anymore. And I'd be willing to bet that if the town manager was to contact somebody at Textron and allow you to do that, you'd be way away, uh, away from the road. And I don't think many folks would see what would be going on. But they would understand, you know, formality of it, uh, the weapons being involved. I mean, that's an idea, but, you know, once again, uh, 
I just don't, Rotary Park I thought might have been a suitable, when I started reading this only about 5 o'clock, I said, geez, maybe Rotary Park would be a suitable area as opposed to the town common. You know, that was my concern. Just, just to answer your concern about just, you know, the, the guns in general, Mike, is that uh, when I did speak to Chief Pagonis, I certainly notified him, I told him that uh, any time we would do something like this, we would certainly notify the police just so that they would know where we were at and what we were doing. Uh, we do periodically we notify the police for example when we do our midnight march uh, we do have permission to lie fire from the common to the Burlington Ave bridge and usually believe it or not we have you usually have, have a handful of residents that are out there <laughs> cheering us on with flags and banners and stuff and say way to go and and once in a while we have uh, you know the police will say that you know somebody called because they heard a gunshot because we are you know like I said we, we do have uh, we do fire that day and the um, and the police say, yeah, it's a minute, minute. We actually have a police escort that'll escort from Wilmington right to the Burlington line. As a matter of fact, last year, I think we had a Burlington policeman that marked, that escorted us to the Bedford line. And then we're, like this year here, for example, we're, we're trying to work in conjunction with the Bedford Minutemen to march the rest of the way with Bedford through Concord. As a matter of fact, we may also have some help from the, our Burlington contingent. Maybe we could do a kind of a, you know, Wilmington starts out, gather into Burlington with some more men, gather into Bedford with more, and have a nice healthy uh, regiment that goes that'll take us into uh, Miriam's Corner. And, and frankly, at Miriam's Corner, we disperse. We don't uh, continue on from there. Uh, last year, we left Miriam's Corner, had a quick breakfast, and did the Little League Parade, which we're a little bit tired after that. But but again, anytime anytime we actually have the muskets out like that, Mike, we certainly would notify the police and. And they know who we are, what we're doing. We give them cell phone information. So, and it hasn't. I don't think it's. I don't think it's ever been a problem, or at least in recent memory, that the police have ever uh, uh, been called for any of our events or anything that we've been. <coughs> aside from cheering us on at a Memorial Day parade, maybe as we're firing or something. But I don't think there's. Um, I don't think they've ever. We've ever had a call from the police no. at all. No. I don't think we have a problem as a board. We're giving you some space to, to practice. I know in the military, some of the, um, Fort Jackson, South Carolina, their DNC fields, practice fields are 100, 100 fo a football field, 100 yards. And at any time, there might be two companies of men, over 400 men practicing DNC. So I understand what you're saying about marching, but you don't need that big of an area for a four abreast honor guard to, to, uh, to practice your DNC turns. I think the text run is a great idea. I think even if there was a softball game going on, the other side of the field, there's all kinds of room over there. So I don't think we have a problem. Um, I, don't, I, don't, I would have a problem setting a precedence of letting a unit or a company or an organization practicing their whatever they do on the common, where I don't think it's a practice field, like what the chairman said. So I think there is other, a lot of uh, other fields in town, and Textron would be also, also very visible for you, too. So I think that was a good idea, Mike. Okay, go ahead. Uh, yeah, well, I echo your admiration for the organization. I, I, I like having you in town. I think it's, you know, the, the Minutemen are part of the, the fabric and sort of the personality of Wilmington, so I, I compliment you on that. I guess I, I'm not 100% with Mr. Newhouse or even Mr. Kyra on uh, the objection of this particular use, and I want to go through a couple of numbers because that's what's helping me <coughs> create my opinion here. You, I think we estimated, uh, I think you said four to five times through the season. I'm going to go on the high side five times, right? Um, with about a, an hour and a half each time. I'm going to even. I'm going to give you an extra half hour. I'm going to say two hours. You going to with us? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, that's ten hours, right? Five to the ten hours, and let's say ten people. I, I, I guess you know one of the comments here was it doesn't have uh, uh, sprinkler systems, and and we don't. You know, it's not a, a field that has a traditional type of maintenance. I don't view. Uh, ten people taking a walk on the common five times through the summer as undue strain on the on the grass. So I, I, that's just a personal gut kind of feeling, and I, I certainly respect and admire and appreciate uh, the recommendations of the town manager as well as your thoughts on it, Mike. Um, I'm, I'm wary of the precedent that Mr. Samaglia talks about. Uh, this indeed is a different use of the town common that hasn't been uh, raised before, um, but I don't think by by its necessity of as having not been used for this purpose before, that that means it can never be used for this purpose ever. Um, and I, I, 
I think given the context of what you've described, I'm not in opposition. I wish you would seriously consider sitting down with Mr. Kyra because he has ob uh, objections to it that I don't share. But, uh, you know, if, there, if, if you could compromise, as Mr. Lepore said a moment ago, if there was a way to compromise that meets everyone's, uh, I guess, uh, desires, then we all win. Uh, but that said, I, I don't personally, Mr. Chairman, find uh, any, anything serious to object about this. And frankly, I'm kind of surprised we even have to vote on it, I guess because it's a unique kind of use. Um, but ultimately, to me, it strikes me as a bunch of people taking a walk on the park. Yeah, just in terms of the vote, these requests always come before the board. Sure. That's, yeah. Uh, if I may, Mr. Chairman, the thing I might want to add is that, um, this, as you said, this request hasn't come before the board. Uh, I, I would probably venture to guess that the original Board of Selectmen back in colonial times probably insisted that we muster on the town common. And I think they would insist that we would march in a, in a public location. Um, and I believe that was the intent of the Board of, of then, you know, and again, we're going back to colonial times, and, and we're certainly representative, but not, in fact, the, the Minutemen of, of past times. Um, your, your numbers, you're probably looking, I would say, not really 10 people, Mike, but you know, respectfully, I'd say probably about 15 or so. But, but again, certainly a lot less than the kids that cross over every day uh, during the school year. And, and again, a lot of the time we'd be marching on pavement, not necessarily the, the grass. And the truth of the matter is, is that if we're going to march on a non-irrigated town common field versus a non-irrigated uh, rotary park field, we're still causing equal amount of walking, walking <laughs> stress uh, to whatever field we're looking at. And some of the time we might be just standing trying to plan what we're looking to do. I mean, it's not, we're not going to be pacing back and forth, back and forth over a one set area back and forth, so. And I do, I've nodded at the gentleman in the front row. I, I will get to you, sir. Let me just um, get to the selectmen who are raising their hands again. Um, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, I agree with Mr. Shampoo um, as far as the concept. I, the reason why I'm saying that is, you know, I'm looking at this group. is it, It's a little bit more special than the ordinary person uh, group that's asking for that um, common, say, for use of a wedding or pictures or, you know, other use of, of we've had, you know, Fourth of July, um, which is a great asset to the town, don't get me wrong, but attracts ton, tons and tons of people on that common blankets and everything else. What, what comes to my mind, which is a big value of why I would vote in favor of that comment to these people, because I've seen that group actually take money and donate it to the board, other town, um, other um, areas of this town as far as donations, for, and, and go out and raise money, give what they can back to this town. So it's a little bit more than they're giving donations, and we're giving out weddings and pictures and whatever free of charge. We're not charging anything for that comment. So therefore, you know, for 20 people, as long as it's limited to, um, as Mr. Shampoo said, I have no problem voting in favor to give that group a um, okay with, with a few conditions. And we might have to look at that. If you don't like what I said, we might have to start looking at that comment in a different way then. We might have to start charging fees. Sir, thanks for your patience. I'm Cap Cap Captain Bill Hitchcock. I started in Wilmington Minutemen in the early 90s, of 17, 18 years I've been involved in the company. And I, we actually have pictures up at our headquarters of the Wilmington Minutemen Company marching on the common, drilling on the common. And they have done it for many years. Wilmington Company has gone through some good times and down to bad times and trying to rebuild. And like Mr. Shampoo says, I do not honestly, I cannot conceivably say. We're wearing basically Sunday shoes when we're on that con. I cannot see, we're not wearing football cleats, we're not wearing soccer cleats, we're not doing anything to dig that common. We're not driving vehicles on it, we're not dragging anything except the weight of our bodies, walking, maybe primarily on the pavement, but we've done it in the past. I have seen the pictures at headquarters that proves we have marched on common, not only for uh, raising the liberty pole ceremony, <coughs> but also for drill practices. 
And back in the 90s, we had 25 to 30 members on that common when we did this. And it is our avenue for getting our name out there to the public to say, hey, we're a walking company. Yes, I understand people are afraid of seeing folks, but if you see folks in a line with five or six, seven guns, and you're going to see a company flag right out there with it, along with other town flags, state flags, United States flags, you're going to realize that you're doing some type of drilling. I would say 1% chance of getting a call to the police department. Yes, I do agree, we do need to contact them and say, okay, we're going to go on this particular day and we're going to march. We're just letting you know, just as a friendly courtesy. Just in case there's that 1% person that may happen to call up and have a problem. But as far as saying that we haven't done it, I've got the proof. And I can show Mr. Kyra the pictures. I would love to sit down and say, yes, we've done it. This is our proof. And like Frank said, the common is the largest space in town. We're not standing in one spot. We will move around the whole common as much as we need to use it. Yes. Um, the other thing I wanted to know is such as the point that Mike made about the amount of hours and the amount of people that are going to be using that common. <coughs> um, in any given day, five days a week, from September to June, you probably have twice that amount of footsteps going across that common daily. On the 4th of July, you have thousands of footsteps on that common along with tents set up, blankets set down, different things going on there. And nobody has really damaged the grass. So I really don't see how you know, 200, uh, 100, let me think, 10 hours, 10 hours of 20 people walking on, a, on the common doing our drilling. And the reason I, I, I think the common is best also is because, you're right, it, Rotary Park might be able to do it, but the common has it all, everything that we need. It has the uh, designated cement where we can stay within our parameters and make sure that everyone's in line. It has the large field where we can act literally like we're in a parade, walking down the street, doing a wheel at the end of the street, you know, 150 feet away, so that you're not walking 10 feet, do your wheel. 10, another 10 feet, do another wheel. You're actually going around the parameter of the common, doing your full marching. I understand also he wants to make sure, as he said, passive use. It is passive use. No one's playing baseball on it. No one's in soccer cleats. No one's in baseball cleats. Nobody is pounding anything into the ground. Nobody is disturbing any part of the common or harming it in any way. If anything, our group being one of the oldest groups in town and more um, an honorary group, all right, we've been invited into Boston, we've been invited into the um, oldest cemetery as an honor. No other group. There are plenty of other groups that march in that parade and have marched in that parade. But Wilmington has been the one chosen to actually go in and be the honor guard for the cemetery. The better we look, the better Wilmington looks. The better Wilmington looks, the better name we have. And I, I just think that for the amount of time that we're looking for, it is indeed passive use. I can't see how it's setting a precedent for any groups down the road because, let me ask you a question, how many groups in Wilmington are of a military um, reenacting group that has the need to do military drilling and is actually doing it to make the town of Wilmington look better. Yeah, I mean, my point, I, I wouldn't say that there are any other uh, groups necessarily like the Minutemen who would be looking to use it, but I do know that, uh, as I said, I think there are literally thousands of people in, 
in Wilmington who volunteer their time for very worthwhile causes. It includes all the service organizations, the faith-related organizations, and the they have Catholic, properties. and well, uh, not necessarily the service organizations. But I, I really see this as a precedent of people who who are doing good work, different work than you might do, but certainly uh, good work that benefits the town who um, will want to increase their visibility and have some, some regular functions at the, at the common. That's, that's what I see coming from this. Now, maybe time will prove me wrong, but uh, that certainly is a concern of mine, especially when it seems to me that, you know, I'm, I'm hearing on the one hand that you need the size of the common and all that the common has to offer, but then the other hand, such a limited number of folks in the, in the group who will avail themselves of that. So. If I may, Mr. Chairman, I know that you know you you, you mentioned that, that we're one of the few service organizations that's looking to use the common, and I, and I would beg to differ. I would say that between I know that there's organizations that do yard sales and plant sales and uh, walks and runs that that stem from the common, and, and there's there's other activities, the um, the gazebo use as far as the um, band concerts, and, and notwithstanding Fourth of July activities. Again, I would say that we're probably, and again, I don't, I don't think we need to really belabor it, but I, I think we're, we're probably probably a more passive, uh, probably one of the more passive groups that you're going to have. Because like I said, a lot of the, the quote, walking that we're going to do, and again, I say walking, we can call it marching, as, um, as uh, a, I don't know if I should call him as Brigadier General, Captain or, or Private, depending mm -hmm. on the company. I mean, you know. Some of the guys are going to be wearing shoes. Some will be wearing sneakers. You know, it's not. It, there's not going to be you know cleats and and hard walking in the common, especially if we're going to be doing you know, practice runs. There's no reason to to dress in, in anything. And and I don't think any of us any of, none of us will, will march in any type of uh, heavy attire because the, the, the heavy footwear attire because we're, we're, most of the time we're you marching. Shoes? Yeah, yeah, most of the time we're marching on a pavement. I, I, we understand what you're saying, and, and we've all agreed you've got a wonderful organization, you've done all kinds of good things. We're not talking about tearing up the grass. I don't think anybody up here has mentioned that. It was mentioned in a, um, a letter from the, from the uh, town manager. The point that I'm making is, and we're gonna, we can go back and forth on this all night, or somebody will make a motion here, um, is we're setting a precedence to, to, for an organization to practice on the common. And you're not marching enough, to, uh, you know, there's not going to be 1,500 guys up there in army boots and walk in cleats to tear it up. We understand that, okay? But there are other areas in town. That, that's the only point I'm trying to make is we're setting a precedence to, to, to make that a practice field for you, whatever, you name the organization, a cheerleading squad, a, a, a Cub Scout group. To want, there's a million other things that you can say that. That's the only point that we're trying to make. We understand how wonderful your company is, and, and God bless you for all your, your accolades and going to cemeteries and all the um, invitations you've received. And, and, and that's, that's the point I um, just want to get across. I don't think we're worried about you tearing up the grass. I think if it's raining out there and it's covered with mud, you're not going to be out there practicing anyway. Thank you. Uh, one, one thing I will add, Mr. Smaglia, is, is that, um, yeah, we're, we're an organization that's sitting before uh, th this Board of Selectmen asking for a request. I would say that that you would look at the merits of another organization. For example, if, as Mr. Uh, Newhouse mentioned, I think it was the, the band wanted to, uh, to, to conduct practice on the common, I was certain that they would be sitting here as well under a separate request and mentioning uh, what their requirements and their requests are. So I, so I think that, you know, to look at to look at us and saying, well, we're setting a precedent. Hundreds of I don't know if I'd say hundreds, but many groups, many organized groups, many organized service organizations, many organized fundraising. Act, uh, I don't remember one group coming in here asking us to use four or five weeks of the summer, one day a week in the whole summer. I I never remember that. That would also be a precedent. The time you're asking for one day a week for four or five weeks. We're not we're not asking for exclusive use. All we're doing is this that we're just being we're just asking permission to to be part of the common. And certainly, if there was any type of organized activity going on, we would we would beg out. We, you know, we we're not we're not looking to say, hey guys, you know, if the selectmen said we get the common tonight, get off. We're not looking at that at all. We're just looking to to be you know, you know, as long as there's no other activities going on. Like if we drive up, and there's a wedding going on, or. Uh, uh, the plant sales or the fund, you know, whatever. Fourth of, certainly, Fourth of July, we're, we're busy anyway. I mean, that's, we, you know, we're not, we're not even remotely looking to be close to that. But 
again, I, I would just say that we are one of many service organizations that use the common. And if you're looking at the combined time, as, as uh, Selectman Champo said, of probably about 10 hours max, I would say that many organizations will come up to you and, and want the common for upwards of 10 hours max on, on one given day. And, and we're looking at probably a maximum of five five or five times. And, and it may not even come today. It might be three, for all we know. We, we don't know. You know, we just look at, hey, guys, we want to get together, you know, try it out, see if it works. The other thing also is it may not work for us. We might say, you know what, guys, we, we really don't want to be here. This, this, for whatever reason, isn't working for us, and, and we need to find another location. Uh, regarding Textron, uh, might be a possibility, but again, you know, there's logistics involved, and in, in, I know that there's still soccer games that go on there. The um, I used to work at Textron, so I know that they get the ball games that go, the employee ball games, and other activities that go on. And, and you know, to, we'd have to go down to security, pick up the key, come back, march for an hour or so, return the key. Hopefully, there's some ava someone available that has the key. I mean, you know, like I said, we've I've been involved in that many years ago when I used to work there. I worked in it was AFCO, and then it was when it was Textron. So I know the field, and, and you're right. I mean, it is a go good long stretch of stretch of field, but it's not town property, and that's which is one of the reasons why we come into you know this fine board, is to request the use where a town-based organization, we were actually reenacted by this very board. So, so this very board, even though that was many years ago, um, you, know, you guys reactivated us and we're looking to enhance uh, what, what you guys, what the Board of Selectmen at that time in 68 have done. And, and you know, lastly, to emphasize what Karen said is that as we're marching with that guidance and our flags, people are looking to say, there's Wilmington. And the better, Wilming the better we look, the better the town looks. I don't think that we're, we're going to disturb the grass. I, I, I don't think we're setting any type of a precedent. I respectfully disagree with that, only because you guys, you, know, you guys will have many requests over this year for a variety of events. So, and, and some of them are service organizations. Some of them will be, as Mr. Lepore said, a wedding. You know, a wedding is a one-shot deal, but you're having 100 odd people walking all around the common for several hours. We're not looking for that. We're looking for an hour, maybe two hours tops on a, on a given day. And, and like you said, Mr. Uh, Simaglier, that if, if it's inclement weather, we don't want to be out there in the rain. So we, you know, we're looking for you know, like a, a reasonable night, and, and that's it. So I don't know if any of, if, if, I, if I may, Mr. Chairman, I don't know if any of our other members have anything they'd like to add in, in uh, Michael, yes. uh, without duplicating anything that Frank said, because I believe he's covered everything that we are asking of you, Board of Selectmen, um, we're a very proud group. I'm, I'm happy as pig and poop to be a <laughs> I mean, all of our members, all of our members are dedicated. I mean, and as Frank has stated earlier, and Billy, we want to improve our marching, our steps, and as far as damage on the common, I mean, it's already brought up. We've got a very small group. Um, and, and the other thing, I think why we're, traditionally, traditionally the commons were where the militia met to begin with. Um, as Billy said, there are documentation of the, of the headquarters, I, I believe him. I know there's plenty of pictures up there. But I think one of the other things that Frank didn't bring up, we're, I won't say we're a temp, I'm a recruiting officer, by the way. <laughs> and, and I'd like Don't get too close to I offer each and every one of you a chance to be a minute there. But, I mean, we want a highly visible place that, as Frank stated, the townspeople can see us. Oh, that's the Wilmington Minutemen. They must be practicing their drilling. And, the common suits us to a T for the length, uh, just for the size of it. And I mean, I disregard the, the damage on, on the common. There's, there's more activity beyond us. But I would like you to consider granting us permission to use the common for four or five nights during the summer. I thank you. You, Jim, can I move? Oh, sorry. I was going to try to move this to a Yes, Mr. Lingenfelder. I just have one very quick comment. I, I would view this as kind of a, a, a new exploratory idea, what they're trying to accomplish. And I think you might be able to accommodate them by allowing them to, at least on one occasion, 
use the comment and see if there are any other issues that come up as far as complaints or concerns and move forward as, a, as an evolutionary process where they explore other pot, spots in town, maybe the maybe discussion with the town manager, they can, they can try a few fields and as part of that process you can grant them permission at least at a minimum on one occasion and see if any other uh, complaints or situations unforeseen come up and, and, and view it as more of an exploratory uh, process in 2010 and, and you know options you know as one of them give them at least permission to get at a minimum of at least one occasion my comment. thank you anything else from the board yeah, I don't know just looking for a happy medium here I understand exactly what you're saying and not, not to echo I mean you guys do a great job and obviously we're looking at what we can do I mean I don't know if we tried it once or twice you know uh, just to see how it goes I mean you know I mean I'm, ha I'm willing to meet you halfway but but then I do believe there's other places other areas to do this and I'm by me saying that that doesn't mean I'm negative against anybody here or the Minuteman company itself that's not the case I just you know like once again I mentioned Rotary Park right across the police department I mean that's a visible field that's this right across the police department I mean there's you got a track area I mean and you got a big area of uh, grass I just it's right in front of the police department you know that way if there was any questions but yeah, I'm willing to look at both sides, you know what I mean? Uh, maybe once or twice and see how it goes. I'm not being negative, I'm not trying to be ultra positive. I mean, I like to be positive on most everything, but I mean, I just, do I think there's uh, alternatives out there? I do, you know, but um, I'm all ears, I'm all ears. One comment on uh, Rotary Park. Mm -hmm. When you have a softball or a t-ball game going on down there with all the mothers and fathers and you have the area right there beside the police station with police activities going on, there will be next to zero parking for us when we go take 15 cars approximately to go in there and try and park on a Tuesday evening if there is an activity going on there. Parking will be next to nothing. Uh, for us to get in there, that is a minor downturn about the usage of that field because we also cannot park on Route 38 um, to be able to park there, and I cannot always guarantee the Masonic Temple having their space available either. Mm -hmm. Mr. Yes. I, I'm the one that brought up the T-ball, but what comes also? I mean, yeah, Rotary Park would be an alternative. However. As it stated, you have Little League, you have T-ball. You're going to have muskets there, which is great. Yes, the police station across the street. But on the other hand, <coughs> children are always going to look at the rifle. They're going to take their focus off the game, off the attention, what they're supposed to be doing. And, and actually, a ball could be hit to them. If they're looking what the Minutemen are doing, even though it's 20 people, you, you know, we're raising an issue here that actually a ball could hit one of them in the air or a face. And, and, you know, it's, it's a stronger possibility of focus, even though, you know, let's face it, a five or six year old or even uh, spectators watching their brothers and sisters play, gonna be watching them, as you said, you wanna be the focus point. You will be the focus point at the smaller ages, and that's where this little league and T-ball, that's what that pack is about during the summer. So, I mean, I have no problem giving them a grant for 2010. If it works, they can come back one more year next year and, you know, if we have no complaints, Parks and Ground says, geez, you know, you know there is no uh, issues um, this year with them using that field. And again, as Mr. Bogner said, this group here wants to take pride in themselves. They're a nonprofit group. They're donating money back to the town. We owe a little bit back to that organization because I've personally seen them on Sundays, I've seen them on weekends, I've seen them staked out, I've seen them I visit them when they did their march going down to Burlington at midnight, one in the morning. I mean, that's a lot of work. I mean, I look at these guys and I'm saying, wow, I don't think I could march from Wilmington to Bedford and I look at the shape of these guys. <laughs> so, I mean, you know, I think, why not give them a try? I mean, I, I like to push this for a vote. I have no problem um, voting on this right now. Do you have a motion? I'll make a motion that we grant the use for um, the Minutemen um, with um, stipulation that 2010, with the condition that as long as no um, issues have been raised through police department, through parks and grounds, um, that we at least give them um, a chance to um, participate in their organization. How many times? How many? Days. Well, I believe they're requesting for five times, you so I would put no more. Amend it down to four. Just no, I mean I'll give you no more than five times. 
if we have a second, then we can. A second for discussion, I'm saying, is obviously, I, you know, see what we're doing with it. And uh, I mean, I would like to be at least comfortable and at least meet halfway, do it a couple of times and see how it is and visit it after a couple of times. I mean, is that going to be an issue? I mean, I know just. I mean, unless we just go along. Yeah, for, for me, I, I think I'm, I've been clear on where I'm coming from on this, but um, regardless of that, depending on what the majority wants to do, I mean, typically when we have a request to use the common, it's for a date certain. If, if we're going to, you know, if, if the board's going to vote to approve this, it really ought to be for certain dates. Uh, at, at this point, um, no scheduling conflicts have been brought to my attention, but, you know, I think to uh, condition any motion on the police department and public work certainly makes sense. So what are the days and hours when this would be? I mean, you want to make sure that it's, you know, sure. it's, how long... I thought that, Mr. McCoy, would be on a Tuesday evening, I would say about 6.30 to 8, thereabouts. You know, don't forget, it, it, you know, it gets dark, even, the summer, even the, in the heat of the summer, it gets dark probably about 8 o'clock, so we're certainly not, not looking to, uh, to be there after dark, but we want to make sure that any of the members that have work concerns want to go home, have supper, come back. Um, it certainly. 7:30 would be fine. Something What's that? Like that? 6:30 to 7:30. I would say 7:30 possibly. And again, I only really say up to eight, Mike, only because if we're if we're in the middle of something, I hate to say, guys, it's it's exactly 7:30. We need to leave, but but certainly we're, we're looking to you know we're not looking to to be there at night. 6:30 okay. to 8. 6:30 to 8. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I would say weather permitting, if, if even if the chairman or if somebody wants to put that in their uh, in their motion, because again, we're not looking to be there in the rain. We don't want to be in the rain if, if so I can to you that as an organization we will not be out marching in the rain. I understand. Yeah. I'm, yeah. All right. Practicing. I'm willing to meet no, halfway. Practicing. I understand that, but you know, if there's any and I know there's there are some homes in that area. That's why I mentioned uh Textron Field. It's just one house in the area. But with that that's the understanding of it. it's gonna be a non issue and it's a non issue, but if it becomes an issue then we need to uh, mm -hmm. visit it. You know, I'm, I'm I understand like that. Mr. West, would you mind if, um, to be in due fairness, I want to be fair to you, your side also, that, as we said, rain, but could we have, like, um, that 24 hours would have to be, in other words, 24 hours prior and uh, prior, yeah. because this way here you could, it could stop raining. We don't want you on there. We want at least a day for penetration to be so you wouldn't have any problems with any, um, you know, decay in the soil. Okay. Well, one of the things, if I may, Mr. Mr. Lepore, is that, you know, aside from being Minutemen, uh, the vast majority of us are residents of the community. And as we want to make ourselves look better, we don't want to make ourselves look better to the detriment of the common. I, I so, agree. I mean, you are in Wilmington as far as, like you said, you march with the Wilmington emblem. You are pride. You, you, you're pride, proud. You also are looking for your pride for your character also. And so I, I have no problem. Um, and like you say, you are all, you know, citizens and taxpayers of this town, most of them. And, and uh, so, but again, I'm just trying to work both sides so we don't have any problems of call, you know, the first day off the ground that, you know, you we're getting a complaint. I'm trying to right. help you people so you're not going to get to that point. Right. And again, like I told, like I talked to, when I talked to Chief Pagonis, I told him that any time we would do something like that, uh, we would certainly notify the desk sergeant at the police station so that if there was some sort of a, a complaint or uh, an issue that you could probably, you know, it might be, why are there a bunch of guys with guns on the common? Somebody might raise that question. They call the police, and the police could, you know, I'm, I'm assuming that the, that the desk sergeant would say uh, they've got, you know, they're, they're practicing an organized event, and they're an organized group. They're not a political group trying to make any type of a... Um, That's who you should notify. Of a should political statement. Mr. Chairman, can I just add one more thing in due fairness? And, and I just think, you know, what I'd like to add to it, if you wouldn't mind, that if a wedding was planned for that Tuesday night, that the wedding would have priority over their usage. Mr. Lepore, I could go you one step further. We're, we're not looking to interfere with any right. planned event, be it a, a wedding, a fundraiser, anything, you know, if there's uh, concerts on the common. That's why, again, our thought pattern was a Tuesday night, figuring that it was a weekday. The concerts are usually on Wednesday, every odd Wednesday. 
So we're not interfering with that. And we're not, and, and again, if there's any type of a uh, school activity or something like that, we don't want to be around a huge crowd of people because, quite frankly, we'll get in each other's way and we're not looking to do that. We're looking at a That's quiet. What I'm, saying, right. I'm just saying, basically, what you're saying, Frank, and I'm sure we'll move for the vote, is basically they, the public has the priority. Absolutely. Okay. We don't. We will be in uniform, too, so uh, that's yeah. a giveaway that we're. Well, you better be mad if you're going to be holding muskets. Let <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know now. All right. <laughs> All right. Um, I apologize. I, would, I, I caught most of that, but I, I still didn't catch dates. The dates are kind of tough to give because if we're doing weather permitting and we say June, I'm just going to pick a date. If we say June 5th and we told you we're going to be there and it's raining, so we want to move it to the next week so that we can get our practice in. If we tell you June 5th, you're not going to know that on June 12th there's going to be an alternate date. So if we... Maybe we should do it so we have way. Let's get the five dates right now. I mean, unfortunately, if it rains, you can't do it. Let's say there's another date that somebody's got an activity going on. There's just five, five Tuesdays, five Tuesdays in June. Five Tuesdays. Would you be one, one, like one month week? is it? Or? Oh, we, couldn't we, do that. we probably wouldn't be marching every week, but why don't, if, if I may... we got kids um, getting out of school. Yeah, because we've got there's activities. Uh, I, I would venture. Do you guys have any comments on dates? When's this? The uh, don't mind me asking. The music concerts. Are they every Tuesday uh, after Wednesday? Wednesday. 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 Okay, I knew there was one. Okay. And what's Fourth of July week this week? Does it start the twenty eighth? We're looking certainly to stay away right. from Fourth of July activities, uh, Selectman like Shampo. We're not looking to to be part of that crowd. Um, maybe if we had the. <laughs> Eighth and the third Tuesday in June. We can't do the no eighth. We couldn't do eighth. Probably the yeah. Probably the eighth and the is it the twenty second of June? You're gonna have problems with those dates. You've got graduation coming up, and you've got kids getting out of school. Though that is the prime time that all the kids are doing their stuff. So I'm looking at this. Okay, I'm sorry. But you want to spread it, right? One, two, three. And so how about those dates? All right. Uh, and again, if I, if I may, just to, just to Mike, check, yeah, about, you're closer to the calendar. Tell me if I was off on a day because I'm trying to see it far away. <laughs> uh, guys, would you, would you think it would be an issue with uh, all Tuesdays, June 29th? June 15th, June 22, June 29th. And in July, if you get about the 5th. Yep. Right? Uh, no, it's on a Tuesday. It's the 6th. July, on a Tuesday, it's the 6th, 13, 20, yeah. 27. Mike, we'd, um, say we'd stay away from June 29th, but maybe because that's, I think that's in the heat of 4th of July activities. Yeah, but what's the week? What would be before the week it. before 22, the, 20, the 15, 22nd? Yeah. 15, 8, 1. Okay, if I may, just to, just we got some members here. If, if I may, June, June 22nd, July 12th, then July 27th, August 3rd, and July August 17th. 17th. July 13th, because you're talking Tuesday, so it's July 6th, July 13th, July, oh, 20, July 27th. Thank you. I told you I couldn't see it all. <laughs> all right. All right, so, so. so we're looking at uh, June 22nd. And again, these are all Tuesday evenings, June 22nd, July 13th, 13th July 27th, yes. August 3rd, August 17th. Yes, yes. Uh, there will be no rain dates for another day of the week. If the, if it's, if there's, if the commons are not in proper conditions, that will not, our event will not occur. End of story. That date will just disappear. So as an example, if June 13th or June no 12th it rains heavily so and this commons still allows you the 13th, we're not on the common. No, we're not asking for a makeup date. And we'd be happy, uh, maybe if you if you'd like, uh, Mr. Chairman, if uh, if you grant this motion, uh, we could come before you, maybe in your July meeting and let you know um, how, it's going. how it's going, if there's any issues, or certainly if you, if you want to contact me as the captain. Uh, and we have our election, so I'm hoping that'll be captain again, but uh, certainly whoever the captain is, um, come the uh, installation of offices, you can contact that person and make sure that, that we've abided by the guidelines set forth, forth before the Board of Selectmen and that we haven't strayed from that and we still have the blessings of the uh, 
I'm sure if there's an issue, we'll hear about it. I'm saying it's so, so will we. Yeah. We have an election too, so I'm hoping that I'll. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. All right. I, I I'm going to attempt to um, restate the motion as it's been seconded, just to make sure that we have enough to uh, provide the uh, town hall. I understand the motion to be uh, to approve the request, uh, generally weather permitting. We understand the discussion, but generally weather permitting and subject to police department and public works conditions uh, for the uh, dates of June 22, July 13, July 27, August 3rd, and or August 17. And the specific time I understood to be 6.30 to... Eight. 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 See no reason eight. why it would be there beyond eight. Would maybe we may leave before, you know, a few minutes before or something like that. I mean, you know, but I, I, we're not looking to be there at night. Okay. And then uh, not as part of the motion, but I think part of the record, you explained that if there were any conflicts that you should be contacted and that you'd accommodate... Absolutely. Request. Absolutely. Absolutely. We're I not looking to be part of a conflict. Maker, the motion, the second, is that acceptable? Fine. Yeah. Okay. Uh, anything further from the board? All in favor of the motion? All opposed? Uh, four in favor, one opposed. Okay. Thank you. Good luck, much. gentlemen. We'll see you out there. Talk and to you anybody, sure. again, I, I offer the invitation to our installation Thank of you. offices on the 14th, and uh, if you can make it, we'd appreciate it. And you know, we are having light refreshments, so if somebody could, uh, if, you, if you can make it, if you want to contact us, just so we make sure there's enough food for, uh, for everybody. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good night. <clears throat> okay. Let's give folks a chance to uh, gather their things. Our agenda item that had been scheduled for 7.30 p.m. is a Board of Selectmen discussion regarding a proposed town meeting warrant article prepared by Selectman Raymond Laporte to offer additional property tax exemptions to elderly residents. And uh, Mr. Laporte, I know we had spoken last week when you had uh, requested agenda time. You'd indicated that um, you've um, you know, done your homework and have things to present. Um, why don't you walk us through uh, what you're requesting of the board and uh, the uh, proposed article that we got this evening. Maybe you can specifically tell us what's the same or different from, from what we got last week. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, the reason why I'm putting forward this article, and at least I'm hoping to get support for it, is that I'm looking at the, um, the elderly that are on fixed incomes. Um, as you know, you know, they're becoming vi victims of tax burdens fee increases, inflation, medical expenses, heating, and utility costs. That's just to mention a few. Um, there's other reasons why I'll explain how I came up with this proposal um, after I read it to the public. And basically, it will benefit um, what I'm tuning into, and that's the people that are definitely in need, need of support. Um, what I'd like to um, start now is um, a resident of the town, 65 to 75 years of age, shall be exempt from taxation of $150,000 of the fair market value of the real property in the town <coughs> owned by the resident and occupied as the primary resident of the resident. B, a resident of the town, 76 to 80 years of age, shall be exempt from taxation of $190,000 of fair market value of the real property in the town owned by the resident and occupied as the primary resident of the resident. C, a resident of town 81 years of age or older shall be exempt from taxation on $200,000 of the fair market value of the real property in the town owned by the resident and occupied as primary resident of the resident. Section two, the real estate tax exemption set forth in section well, one, shall apply only to residents who have lived in the town for at least five consecutive years, immediately prior to the tax year for which the exemptions apply. Um, 
3, the real estate tax exemption set forth in Section 1 shall apply only to residents who own the real property for which the exemption is sought individually as joint tenant or as a tenant by entireties. Section 4, if the real property is owned by the resident individually, the real estate tax exemption set forth in Section 1 shall apply only to the resident with an annual net income of $49,000 or less and not more than $160,000 in net assets exclusive of the real property for which the exemption is sought. Section 5, the real property is owned by the resident as joint tenant, as tenant by the entireties. The real estate tax exemption set forth in Section 1 shall apply only to the property owners with a combined total annual net income of less than $55,000 and not more than $160,000 in, com in combined total net assets exclusive of real property for which the exem exemption is sought. If this passes at the town meeting, I'd like to put it forward in the fiscal year 2012. So this year is already, the budget is already set forward. It will have no impact in this year's budget. Now, how did I come by on all those figures? First of all, to explain it, as Section A, $150,000. If a person in 65 to 75 years of age to apply, that $150,000, if their, say, assessment is $350,000, they will get $150,000 off their assessment of the value of their property. So in other words, they will only be paying on $200,000. And that goes the same as 190 for the 76 to 80, and the person 81 years old or older will get $200,000 off. If their assessment, say, is 350, they will only be paying on $150,000. Now, how did I come up with the, why the numbers? Okay, it's, the numbers are easy. I put forward roughly $49,000. I feel $49,000 through a person's um, accumulation of, of um, net value really is actually under the, the um, amount earned by um, the average um, at what you call the blue collar work at one time. It used to be $55,000 and I was escalated, but the, the uh, standard of living is less. That's why I use the, the, far, the give them a break of um, $45,000. Um, in the gross is 55000 because, say, a senior wanted to get married, uh, married an, um, a widow or a widower, and they both had the net um, earnings. It, it's basically just giving them a total of $55,000 for the two. The $160,000 net income, why did I do that? Again, I figure $160,000 of total savings isn't that much for, for, for a whole life parent, uh, expand of a person that's on a fixed income. Um, now, why do they come up with these numbers? Again, I looked into it. Social Security is not, ra is not rising anymore for, for seniors. Um, they're not getting any increases. Their they're, they're, uh, Medicaid, Medicare, okay, is, is getting cutbacks, as we all know. Um, they're not getting any more money. They're not getting any more medical benefits. A lot of them that want to have better, better medical policies have to have a second medical policy um, by the people I've been interviewing. So if they want to have better coverage, better prescriptions, they have a secondary um, um, medical coverage. Um, if not, they can't afford a lot of their prescription drugs. Okay, where does that come from? It comes out of their savings. It comes out of what they're getting for Social Security. Um, what's happening now, as we all know, we are placing fees, registration fees, and ones that are driving, going into the age of 70, 75, we're gonna have possibly restrictions. They're trying to do legislation to have road tests, which will probably be more lenient for senior citizen time for driving, which means they're, 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 they're able to get to work and to work is gonna become a hardship even more in years to come. So why am I putting this forward? These are part of the reasons why. Now, if you look over my numbers again, I went to the bank, I looked at the banks. What are the banks paying on your, income, your, your savings? Um, as of right now, I believe the banks are paying 0.80% yearly on your earnings, uh, savings accounts. That's not a heck of a lot. How much for a CD for, uh, for 11 months? 1%. 1% on their money, 0.8% on their money for savings. Let me tell you, the cost of living is certainly going up dramatically, especially for people on fixed incomes. Do they need help? Yes. Are we here in these seats to give help? That's what we're about. We're not about materialistic things. We're here to help society. At least that's the way I look at the, the possibility of life. That's what it's about. Um, now, 
I, again, I stated 2012. I don't want to take anything out of this year's budgets. Um, again, I figure next year, I mean, as I read in the paper last week, our, our free cash is going up. The, t the town is still, you know, no pink slips have gone out. Um, last year's town meeting, Mr. Bogner asked. He was overwhelmingly got a vote of support, but it was an illegal article. This, I mean, impossible. I am positively believe that this is a legal article. Um, he asked that would the town come back and help the seniors we gave as a board, yes, will we be back at a later date. Eight years ago, I brought forward an article asking for help for seniors. I withdrew it. I believe I had momentum going, but at that time, I didn't want to take from people to say, oh, we're going to pay in and get nothing out because of the way I had it written. I believe this covers everything that I've just spoken. It gives, it tunes into the people that need the help, and I really believe that this, with a lot of help from you, the people, the public, can put this forward and make it happen. And I think it's up to not the state anymore. We can't depend on the federal. It's up to us as starting at a local level to help our seniors. And I look at it this way. Every house that keeps getting torn down, okay, is a house lost for your children, okay? Do you want them to pay $1,700, $1,800 a month for bedroom rent, or do you, would you want to get, have a start? And the reason why I'm saying that, because when a senior cannot take care of their property, the next state of that property becomes a knockdown. And guess what? It becomes not a $250 or a $300 affordability for a first-time family that wants to start out and fix as they go, like we all, at least I have. That's the way I grew up. Or do they have to go into a luxury apartment, pay in something that's a $1,700 rent, which is actually a mortgage payment, but there's nothing affordable in this area anymore. So why did I put this forward? I believe um, I answered a lot of it, but you, you know, I'm hoping that the Board of Selectmen, you don't have to do it for me. It's not our money, it's not our taxation, it's the people taxation. Let them decide if they're willing to take a step and help the elderly in their town. Uh, my, my first question actually goes to the end of your comments. Did, when we got this information last week, I presumed, maybe incorrectly, that you were looking to put it on this year's annual town meeting warrant. And what you've provided tonight says that the act will take effect for fiscal year 2012 and subsequent fiscal years. I, are you saying that you still want to put it on this year's town meeting warrant, yeah. even though it's not to take effect till 2012? That's correct. And the reason and why, again, that article that was passed in, if you take a look at it, if you have it in front of you, it, it, someone goofed up there. I don't know where it came from, but it was not my numbers. They had $150. What do you, what do you refer to? In your packet of the weekend. If you look at my numbers, someone put $150. That wasn't me. It's $150,000. $190,000. But was your original intention to yes, make it effective now? It's the way it stands, as I stated with the intent of 2012, because why would I want, a, a 2011 budget's already said and done. Yeah, that's well, true. Why would I want to, to, you know, to infringe on a 2011 budget? I'm not looking to take away from anything that the town manager in, in us that we've already put forward. I'm looking to say, hey, here's my article, let the attorney general three months later approve it if it gets support and wins, and then it goes into effect nine months later. I don't want it to go in effect immediately. I think it's too quick. I mean, you, you know, I don't want to see the next quarter of the taxes, if it wins, go right to, to um, you, you know, people. Give it a year. I mean, then the town can say, hey, the, you know, we can prepare for this. And, and at the same time, tonight, I just heard a million three that's going to be built at Chili's. We're going to have a million three dollars right now, one building for taxation that I heard tonight. So if anything, we're going to be generating stolen income. Never mind if I go in detail of all the other buildings, even though we're slow, that we're going to generate more income. So I'll take the income this year and apply it to help the seniors next year. Well, let's, uh, you know, let's talk about that. What, first of all, I, I, I can't understand for the life of me why you would ask town meeting voters to vote on something that would have um, significant financial ramifications for the town without at least being armed with the information for a prospective FY12 budget. I mean, the, to my way of thinking, the right time in the calendar to start talking about tax breaks like this that, um, you know, 
just substantially, I have a number of questions about. But in terms of the timing, you, you would want to bring this forward in the fall when you have some sense of what the, the fiscal year's revenues have been from 2011, what your expenditures and outlook for local aid and local receipts would be in the next year. I mean, in order to budget for this thing, you have to know what's it going to cost and what's going to be available. So uh, what, I mean, regardless of whether you were to implement it this fiscal year or next, what's it going to cost the town? So I look at it that way, just what you said. If I was to look what you just said, I look at it that, okay, it goes into effect. You have enough time right now to know it's in effect. You're going to have to budget the following year. You're going to have to look at your priorities, which is going to be that, that budget right there, no matter what. It comes down to the point is you either want to help seniors or you don't. And it's up to the people to decide it. I'm not asking that I should have the right as a five-member board to put it out there and say, listen, I'm looking for the seniors to have a tax break. It's, it's up to the community to say we are willing to help them, and yes, we, we're going to vote on it now, and next year, guess what? Just like we always do. If you're going to buy uh, um, any, any, say anything, a piece of equipment, whatever, it's into next year, you're saying, okay, I got to deduct $100,000 next year. You know what's coming. You're going to know that this is coming. What's, okay. the, what's the cost going to be? When people at town meetings say, you want me to vote on this, what's the cost going to be? Well, what's it's very simple. Going to be? It's very simple. We go to town meeting, okay? People can either add amendments to this. You can have your tax accountant come up, and he's not going to give you the, nobody's going to give you the clear answer, because you can. Because well, it's not everybody's going to apply under these conditions. Why do you think I did it? Because what you're asking me. I can't give every senior a tax break because some of them might be earning on just on their money $45,000 a year. I'm giving the ones that need the break. That's why I did this. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not saying that every senior citizen is going to qualify. The last time I came in here, eight years ago, that's the mistake I made. That's the mistake I made. I asked for every senior citizen to have a break. And the problem was just what you're getting at. They came back to me and said, wait a minute, this is like a 50-50 division here. So what I've done is I tweaked where I lost in eight years that I had to withdraw, fine-tune it, and that's the best fine-tuning I can. And yes, is this just working in the town of Wilmington? I hate to tell you, but there's other communities that have adopted what I'm asking here tonight. So Wilmington will be no different than other people that have this other than I've tweeted different numbers. But is it on the books at other, other towns? Yes. Does other towns give tax um, credits for real estate um, and even other states to the, to the seniors and elderly? Yes, they do. Now, why can't Wilmington come forward? And it's an eight-year struggle. I don't know. And, and again, I'm only going one more time. I'm just asking. Let me bring it to the town meeting one more time. Okay? If the seniors want it, then they will come out and vote for it. If they don't want it, then I've done what I've tried. Uh, yeah, I certainly have a whole ton of questions. But let, me, let me go to the board. Yeah, I, I have a ton of questions on this, too. And, and you, real, you realize that Wilmington does give tax abatements for uh, seniors under 41C. That's right. Okay. Um, I think we, this discussion could take a long time. And I don't think it's fair for us board members in the, tonight to come in and get this as a walking in the door five minutes before a meeting and this what you submitted last week in our packet. You're talking apples and oranges here. Then, and we, there, there is a big money ramification here on the, on the budget of 2012. This one here, we could take a calculator, do the math, and pretty much get it close. But this one here, we can't. And I don't think it's fair for us to sit here and discuss this whole, this whole uh, article that you put in here that I got five minutes before we walked in the, in the, uh, in the meeting. So. Then I ask you this. You can have, I'll, you, all right, before we close the warrant, take two weeks. The next meeting, you can have whatever you want. You can bring your tax assessors in and whatever numbers and whatever you feel. Okay? Come so in the next meeting. Yeah, yeah, I'd like to address some of it today. Yeah, it's and just, I hate to tell yeah. you, it was two weeks my thing. It wasn't right. I just told you, pull what was in my packet. I understand my, that, right? It's not I understand right. That. I didn't write it up. I'm telling I you what I got in my packet and what I got walking in the door is totally I different. That's why I made sure that this is legal. So is this going to go in addition sure to 41? That if we brought this to town meeting and it got approved, that the attorney general, I do have a chance that it will pass, that it will not be declined. What, 
let's 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 start with this. Um, I've asked, what's it going to cost? Because in in looking at this, you're right. I, I wouldn't hazard a guess, um, but I would say this: just based on your comments, you referenced the 2008 town meeting vote, the and then the 2003 that you brought forward and withdrew. First well, of all, the 2001. I think it was 2003. Ooh. Uh, right I, it, yeah, so I, I, I recall that you yeah. brought before the selectmen Correct. a tax relief for seniors initiative, which was withdrawn at town meeting, and, I, and I'm certain that was 2003. Okay, I'm, I, I'm certain of that. I'm certain that um, that it, that 2003 was asking for uh, some increased uh, relief for seniors under the existing law. Right. I'm certain that um, in 2008, a petition article was brought to town meeting, which um, council indicated was not legal on its face. But on the floor of town meeting, it was amended and submitted to the state legislature. So first of all, I've not heard anything back from the state legislature relative to, to, to that bill, that legislation that was requested. I can... I wouldn't be surprised if I heard that it either didn't pass legal muster or that it just didn't have the support, but I don't want to pretend I know. I, I don't. But, but I know that that was sent up to the legislature for some action. Um, what I can't get is, number one, what this would cost us. Uh, I, I, know that, I know that at one point, and I can't remember which initiative we're talking about, but the Principal assessor of the town of Wilmington estimated about six hundred thousand dollars in costs. Yeah, I so think when I went through, it was between four and five. Okay, so but so let's let's take let's take five hundred thousand. Right. Okay, you still have to have an idea of how you fund five hundred thousand dollars, whether it's this fiscal year or next. And when we start talking about five hundred thousand dollars, you know, don't forget that our <coughs> our recreation budget. Is a little over hundred thousand. You know, our, our, our seniors budget under um, the budget that's balanced that's before town meeting again this year is a couple hundred thousand. I mean, you're talking about about the kinds of dollars that have wide sweeping implications as to how the town allocates its money. And I just, uh, if if you know, the one thing that I think is a good move is that you came in tonight. You know, last week, I think it was to be on this town meeting. Now what you bring tonight is for 2012. That is absolutely, in my mind, a step in the right direction because at least you try to, you know, bring this through the budget process to figure out, A, how much it'll cost, and rather than extrapolating a year and a half or two years, we're only trying to figure out what it's going to cost, you know, six months to a year out. And secondly, um, to go through the process to understand, you know, what do we cut or where's our increased revenue? I mean, there's no getting around the fact that we have a balanced budget. If you're talking about a $500,000 item, which is going to be an annual cost, by the way, not a, not a one-time capital expenditure, this is going to be an annual cost going forward. Where does the revenue come from? I mean, we get, we get revenues from local aid, which are unpredictable three-quarters of the way through the current fiscal year, let alone two years in advance. We have local receipts, which to this point we've managed to prevent charging various user fees that other towns and implement, that we are doing everything we can and I think will continue to be successful to avoid, <clears throat> excuse me, to avoid them. But there's only so many forms of revenue that you can bring in that are within the town's control. It's it's taxing to the levy limit or going beyond that with a two and a half override, or it's by creating local receipts that we don't already have. So if we can't create that revenue, now we have to look at costs. So what do we cut? And, and I, I look at the, the 2011 budget and I say, I wouldn't want to cut anything that's in there. To me, that, that makes sense. But going forward, if you're going to be talking about an expenditure of a few hundred thousand per year, Either you're going to have to raise revenue we don't already raise, we're going to have to cut costs that we currently have, or we're going to have to do a combination of the two. And I don't see how you go to town meeting and 
April of 2010 and asked people to make that decision for fiscal 2012. Why, why, why don't you take this through the, the budget process in, in the fall when the, when the budget process starts? I, I, it, it just comes down to this, Mike. The people that you just described, um, the younger generation, younger people, like you said, um, providing, you, you know, uh, services for this, this for that, you know, ball fields and whatever. Those people are willing and able to be able to work and obtain income. Okay? I'm taking the fact that the people that are struggling in the older years of their lives, okay, that have already paid the debt to the town, and again, it's either they can afford the town or they have to move on, or they have to basically pay not their real estate taxes, take their house and let it depreciate to nothing, and then we lose the value of the house, and we also lose the value of the senior citizen population because eventually they can't afford to live in Wilmington any longer. So I'm basically trying to preserve the older culture here by what I'm trying to propose. And you know something, to me, if you want to do something, you do it with your heart and you put it forward. If it gets defeated, guess what? You can sleep at night because you tried. I have no problem here standing up into the meeting and say either vote for it, vote it down, this is the way it is. You're going to have to plan for it in 2012. I could have said, hey, just what you said. You want to go for 2011? Like you said, I didn't have it on there. But I didn't want it in the 2011 on that, that first one that I stated. And again, you know, was I here to think? But as a board, as a slack and loo, I feel that I have an obligation and that I can bring this forward to right here and give it a try. And I'm just asking you to know, let me bring it to the warrant. You don't want to stand beside me, you don't have to. Let me bring it to forward to the people. Let the people decide if they want to spend this, if in fact they want us to budget for them to have that $400,000 tax option. Can, they, can we make up $400,000 in this town to pay for the, for the seniors' budgets? I believe we can. Well, certainly if you're going to ask people to make that determination at, at four or $500,000 per year going forward, you also have a responsibility to provide as much information as you can. Right. And, and, and that information could be much more forthcoming in a, in a budget process that begins in the fall. Let, let me, to the substance here, just humor me. And I, and I yeah. haven't questioned your motives or anybody else's motives. Let me, but, you know, let's not make this a litmus test over whether or not we care about our seniors, you know? Let me ask you just one specific question. You, if I read this correctly, um, the exemption that would be requested, again, I think this is to the state, to the legislature. So we'd be requesting the legislature to take action which would enable the town to deviate from the tax laws, if you will, and to provide an increased exemption for certain folks as long as their annual net income is 49000 or less and they have not more than 160000 in assets exclusive of, exclusive of the real property for which the exemption is, is sought. So I'll just give you an example in terms of, you know, the philosophy of this. I understand that a lot of people are hurt. I understand that seniors and, and young working people alike are hurting. Um, how, do I, how do I support something that gives an exemption to somebody that's merely based on their age if they're making $45,000 a year and have $159,000 in the bank? And meanwhile, I've got, you know, two people trying to raise three kids on a mortgage that's more than the value of their house with two working people that have, you know, maybe they have the mortgage payment for next month that's in the bank. I just don't, I don't see that. Well, uh, and I, wouldn't that be the same person that would go to a town meeting and vote no? Anything that you people want to support as far as putting forward, ball fields, um, schools, wouldn't that be the sort of person that you just described with two or three kids that can't afford it? Well, you know, I, I tell you what. Uh, if I'm going to put it before that person, first of all, they might very well be working a second or a third job that day to be able to make this month's mortgage payment. That's quite possible. Um, but even more so, I'd want to make sure that I had the information and that I could say to them, look, if you're going to agree to spend upwards of a half a million dollars per year going forward, how are we going to fund that appropriation? I, I just can't see going to a town meeting 
to ask for real dollars, I mean, to carry that forward to infinity, the amount of money that we're talking about is staggering, and it's, it's truly a budget buster, you know? And, it's, and, and, and again, the, if, if, if you want to say, let's put it before town meeting, put it before the voters, I often take that tact. I often say, well, look, you know, at the end of the day, this requires a town meeting vote. Let's put it out there and see what the residents want to do. I agree with that philosophy, but you also have to have some information. You have to s understand what it's going to cost. It, you, have to, you have to have some indication as to where you're willing to cut or will, where you're willing to raise revenues. And I just, it, regardless of, it, it, I, I guess what I'm trying to say is I'm all for letting the residents decide, but I don't think it's responsible of us to put forward a question for the residents to decide that's not going to be implemented for another year and a half anyways without at least being able to develop some information from the, for them to make an informed decision. That's the bottom line. Mike, when you go to town meeting, it's open for amendment. So if they want to drop it from 2012 to 2011 if it approves, guess what? They have the right to make amendments to this. This is just a document that's coming in. They can change it, make amendments, whatever they want. It's up to the people how they want to amend it. So if you're saying 212, you don't want it in 2012, you want to drop it to 2011, that's fine. All I'm saying, you're going to have enough time, if it approves, to prepare for it. And that's nothing wrong with that. I can't see, how would you not prepare for it? And as far as you want the answers, the last time I brought this in, back in 2003, I'm sure Skip Monahan, he had it all prepared at that town meeting with his numbers. He put those numbers out to the paper. I brought it in with, I don't know how many signatures to bring it forward. I, I, I got the same amount of months. I'm basically, I, I used the same amount of months the last time I brought it in, but I didn't bring it in right away. I, I brought it in, you know, um, basically three, and I believe Mr. Borglitz was right to the end in, in uh, going with figures. So, I mean, you got, you got um, March, April, May, June, um, March, April. You got eight, 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 nine weeks to, to have him calculate whatever he wants. And then again, the people can have the amendment on the floor. Yeah, but make no mistake about it. I mean, <laughs> there's every petitioner has the right, if, if the article is legal on its face, with verifiable signatures of the number that's required in the law to put it on the town warrant. That doesn't mean, from my standpoint, that the Board of Selectmen should take things that deserve a tremendous amount of research, a tremendous amount of analysis, uh, and a, you know, a tremendous amount of planning should it pass. I don't think that it makes sense for the board to just because petition articles can be submitted, you know, notwithstanding the budget two months before town meeting or three months, whatever the math turns out being, I don't think that's how the town should operate. The town should be making recommendations to the town manager and to the finance committee with those recommendations happening in the fall so that the town manager can, uh, you know, assess that and evaluate it and give numbers that mean something back when he presents the budget. And, I mean, that's just the way the process ought to work. And in, and in terms of, you know, the 2003 vote, um, well, it never, as I recall, it never made it to a vote. And that's because... I think in large part, the, ballot, uh, the budget was already balanced at that point, too. I mean, it was the same questions. You, right before you go into town meeting, you can't have this. Now, I understand now you're talking about 2012. That's what's, why, that. why, why, can't, why can't we, why now? Why can't we bring this to the manager and, and have him address this like every other serious, uh, you know, issue that, re that has big financial implications? We, I just don't agree with just throwing it out there at, at town meeting. Um, I, I also don't, I still don't understand the difference, frankly, between this and what was proposed in 2003. You indicated something about legalities. Because, I, because exact, what I'm trying to do is I'm limiting how much money, as you're talking about, that the town is going to be getting a percentage of that, his, of that tax money. The other proposal that I had, they weren't getting a percentage. Everybody was getting a tax break by the age across the board. That's minute, the difference. Minute. You're saying that this, this home rule petition yes. is requesting the legislature to make it law. To make changes, to make yeah. law 
that in the town of Wilmington, we're going to have this favorable tax, tax treatment for seniors that various other cities and towns don't get. But the state is still going to make a reimbursement on this? The state? Yeah, I mean, right now, with our ta senior no, tax no, abatements, the state kicks us back the money. Right. And there's still right. limits it's not, on it's not as substantial as w what we're getting here. And what amazes me most uh, is, I, sorry, uh, I mean, I'll withdraw this tonight. Okay, I'm not going to waste any more time, but I will say this and end it like this. Okay, what amazes me the most is this works in other people's town. That's all I'm going to say, and I am going to withdraw my article tonight. Okay, any other questions or comments? Yes. Chris Tessier from the Lowell Sun. Mr. Phillip Poor, um, I think I had an old version as well of, of your proposition. Would it be worthwhile for us to have the uh, the version that was issued to the fellow selectmen? No, I'd rather not go any okay. further, obviously. Okay. Um, you, you know, I can count one, two, three. And unfortunately, I gave it my best for the seniors of this town. And I feel that. Yeah, that's not if fair. I, that's yeah, not fair it certainly is. Like I that. heard the arguments tonight. I, you know, there's nothing for the, uh, bringing it to a town meeting and going along with me. That's all I'm asking. I'm the heavy guy that's going to bring it forward. I'm the guy that brought it forward tonight, Lou. I have no problem bringing it to a town meeting. I put on it a year later. You're talking about budgets. You're talking about this. I'm going to be fair with you. You're talking about a hundred thousand dollars grant to do a high school. That's fine. Hundred thousand dollars. We did it on the library. Okay? Now, you yeah, want to know what $400,000 is? I mean, go back those years. Okay, Lou? Well, I, but I'm going to, no, hey, it's off I, the no, table. No, no. I don't want to discuss it. Uh, I'll ask I ask you, Mr. Chairman, to go talking forward. About seniors. You're we're up here representing all the, re the residents of Wilmington. I agree with you. Okay? And you're going to put big class warfare out of people that are young and old against seniors because they're already getting the $500 tax abatement, and now you want to increase the, the income. 500 yeah. You think the cost of living a year is 500 that these you, people that are Let me that, finish, Ray, because you keep saying that you're the only one that cares for the seniors in this town. I didn't say that. You got, well, you're insinuating it. You keep saying, Lou. I didn't insinuate that. Okay, no that. one cares for the seniors more than I do. Now, you're talking, you, you want to increase the income, I mean, the asset level, to $160,000. Deduction. If no, the be, in, you, it said it right in the bill, your article, uh, your assets can be $160,000. The assets, that earnings. In other words, they can have $160,000 in their account. In a bank account. Right. Right. That's it, between even two people. Okay, so how much with a person with a $350,000, how much will they get off the taxes? Hold on. You know, I will continue to give everybody their turn, Mr. but Chairman, this, this is Mrs. Table, Madley's turn. We're not turn. discussing anymore. Well, yeah, I know, but you made it, statements I mean, about, the, I think the, the word insinuation was, was the right word for it. You, you made statements that if, if, if uh, go if we don't respond to them, uh, I don't want anybody thinking that I agree with that statement either. So, you know, the, the, you, you withdrew it. That's fine, Mrs. Smagley, The floor is yours if you have a response to that. Well, I, I just I have a real problem when you keep saying you've got to be the heavy and bring up something to support our seniors in our town. I think we do a pretty good job at our town, and a lot of the, the and a lot of the tax abatements that are out there for seniors are income driven too, and there's a reason for that. There's, there's a lot of different uh, uh, Medicare food stamps. You have $160,000 in the bank. You, you don't qualify for food stamps. You don't qualify for fuel assistance. There's reasons for that. I know there's a lot. I can I can go walk. Come over to my office and they'll walk you to every benefit that's out there for seniors. And a lot of them are income driven, not just age. But for you, for you to put this one in here tonight, we walk in this meeting tonight with something that's totally different than we had in our packet, and you can't tell us how much a person with a $350,000 house that's 75 years old is going to save. On taxes, you, you, we, we have to work with real numbers here, right? That's my only point. The first one said $150. That, that wasn't me. I didn't make that. I'm mistake. just telling you what was that, in my. I'm what, just telling you what was in my pack. I, I mean, I, if I walked in there, I look at what it looked like a fool. $150 break, $150, then $190 and $300. I'm just telling you what it was, was supposed in my to pack. be. Out, that's right. That wasn't me that did that mistake. That's why I went out there and made sure that this was going to be a legal document to bring to the town meeting when I seen that. And again, if you look what you have, it's the same order of basically what you had, even though it was a mistake. It's the same terms, Lou. So don't say it's completely opposite. $150 to $150,000? I didn't make that mistake. Well, didn't come from me, and I'm not saying. Well, I mean, my understanding is that you brought your 
I brought it in, but it's not recorded the, the way I brought it. Well, you brought it to the town clerk, didn't you? That's correct. And again, well, it, I don't it, want to go anywhere further, all right? But I did even go to Skip Monahan and show him this proposal if you want to start going. All right? I brought him that there two weeks ago. I asked him, I was sent there to ask for his opinion. I, like I said, I don't want to go any further with this. I'd be glad to withdraw it. I'm not here to argue with the four years, the five years. I just thought I was bringing it forward, and it's my last shot as far as my promise to the town from 2003 and last year. We no, made a commitment no. last year to bring it forward. I didn't see anything done this year. Well, respect and I believe Mr. Borgner heard that, and he asked for that promise. You know, re respectfully, if, if you've been looking to do this from 2003, you just had the past seven years, six years, I'm sorry, just had the past six years to develop some numbers. That's, that's number one. Secondly, to bring it forward, it takes the kind of action that you, that you took here tonight, only to me it's more sensible to take it in the fall. That's, that's my point about the timing. I mean, you know, if it's, if it's about not bringing things forward, we're, we're, the board is here, it's on the agenda, we're listening, we're trying to ask questions and make comments that we think are pertinent and legitimate, we're not looking to beat anybody up, but, um, you know, it's not, not fair to insinuate that nobody else has the seniors in mind because we have questions about this. Again, I'd like to correct that. I did not insinuate. Okay. All I'm saying is basically let me bring it forward. That's all. Just, just let me bring it to a town meeting and let the people decide. Can I have a oh. brief moment? Um, Raymond brought, brought my uh, 2003 issue, and then, gentlemen, do remember, two years ago I brought that article forward for tax relief for seniors, 65 and older, 5%, so on and so forth. It was overwhelmingly approved by the voters, but there was a glitch with the state. Uh, it was good for the town of Wilmington. It had to be good for the whole state. Now. What Raymond brought forth, and all you gentlemen up there, all you have to do is open up your eyes and, and your ears and listen to what Raymond said. He has the most equitable solution to giving back to the seniors. And, and one more thing, two years ago I did a lot of homework. You will be surprised, there are not that many seniors, 65, 70, and 75, who own their own homes. You're talking four to 500,000 that the town is going to lose in revenue? Wrong. It is less than that. My numbers, that was two years ago, added up around 200,000, and you can a ask uh, Skip Moynihan. He and I went over the numbers briefly. Um, I ask you all up there tonight to reconsider Raymond's article and put it forth to the uh, Respectfully, a couple of things. First of all, our eyes and ears are open. That's, that's number one. That's why we're here. Number two, I didn't make up the $500,000. I recall a number of $600,000. I accepted for the sake of discussion Mr. Lepore's number at $400,000. So I, I'm, not, I'm not here to try and convince anybody that I know what those numbers are, but I, I'm willing to take the 400000 as a ballpark to at least have a discussion about it. That, so, you know, in terms of what we're doing here, we have, I believe, started to scratch the surface about a substantive initiative that would cost the town a significant amount of money. Do you want to talk about $100,000 a year, $400,000 a year? To me, it doesn't matter. If we're talking about an initiative that spends that kind of money, it deserves to go through the same evaluation process and budget process as everything else that the town brings forward. That, that happens in the fall. It doesn't happen two months before town meeting. It doesn't happen without answers to really direct questions that we're asking that really that information could have been developed over the course of several years if somebody wanted to. So, you know, again, I'm, I'm defending, I, I don't even know, I heard Mr. Shampoo wants to speak, he's certainly going to get the floor. Um, other than Mr. Smaglia take exception at some of the, some of the comments that were made and want to clarify the, his position at least, 
I haven't heard the, the board do anything other than ask questions. Mr. Lepore withdrew his request. I, I don't know what else to say other than the board should have an opportunity to ask questions and to discuss it. And that, that process is happening right now. Um, I, I agree. I'm sorry, I'll give you the floor. I agree. But it is, again, I'm going to say it is the most equitable split of the town. And well, how do I know that? How no do one we has, we have no numbers, nothing to come Mr. in to get Mayor, money. No one has the final numbers. You up there don't know the numbers. If it's 100,000 or 500,000, until those, and I'm sure those numbers, if, if you allow this article to go through tonight to get put on the warrant, between now and town meeting in May, that side will know the numbers, and this side will know the numbers. And again, Raymond brought it up well, very well. Those who support the article will support it. Those who are against it will be against it. Let the voters decide. And it's as simple as that. In substance, the, the argument that that is the most equitable, I just respectfully disagree. When I look that any Wilmington taxpayer, well, I don't care about that person's age, when a Wilmington taxpayer gets a tax break when they have and, up to $160,000 of assets in the bank, when, when their neighbor, who is going to be responsible for subsidizing that tax break, when their neighbor is scrambling to pay the mortgage this month without nearly $2,000 in the bank, when it comes to equity, I just don't, I don't see that. I don't see the equity in that. And those, those are some of the points that I certainly would make. Um, and, and there are other income levels and ages that are in here that, you know, would take some time to really analyze. But that really is, is my bottom line. How do, you, how do you tell one taxpayer, just because of their age, that they get this exemption, and it doesn't matter that they've got $150,000 in the bank more than their neighbor, who's struggling to raise three kids and working two jobs. That's not equitable. Not, not I my agree point. with everything you said, but if you could just compromise with what I'm trying to get across, allow the voters to decide. Not you, 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 or you. The voters are going to decide it. Give them something. If, if they figure it's a bust, you guys will come up with the figures that of lost tax revenue or the tax breaks that a select few of seniors. Not all seniors are going to qualify. Raymond's done his homework well, evidently, and this is the first I've heard of it. I mean, I, I'm elated uh, that that he has the seniors in his heart and his mind. I mean, the town is see. <laughs> Not because I'm a senior, I'm still a kid. <laughs> Stop it, Fred. I mean, I'm, I'm one of his oldest teenager. I mean, I don't even want to qualify for it, but I know I do. I just know a lot of people. I'm sure he knows a lot of people, and I'm sure each and every one of you know seniors in town that are having a tough road to travel financially. And again, I also agree with you, Michael, that up-and-coming families with children and jobs, they've got just as rough a road to travel. But let's take care of the seniors, the ones that need this. Allow, vote on it. it, it it's simple. Let the voters decide. Okay, Mr. Shampoo, I know you wanted to speak. I, I'm, I just don't support that last couple of sentence uh, words that you said. Just throw it out there and let the voters vote on it. Um, I don't want to go down in history as being the selectman that doesn't support seniors. I love seniors. We all love seniors, and I, and I, 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 I so oppose the notion of anything other than that. Uh, in fact, I'm hoping someday that I'll, in fact, be a senior, um, and I'm looking forward to that. Uh, but there's no way that I could ever support as a resident at town meeting uh, any motion that didn't allow me uh, to have all of the information at hand. So that's as a resident. Now I'm as, as acting as a selectman. And to Mr. Samaglia's point, we had very limited time to review this, the content of this information. Frankly, we had as much time as it took you to read it, uh, to really digest the, the nuances of this, and to have 
all of three minutes while you read it to try to analyze all of the impact that this might have on the budget process and on the allocation of resources to the town, and then to say, ah, let's let the voters decide, let's throw it out there, and eh, maybe it'll pass. And then have the ramifications to have to live with that next year, the year after, the year after, the year after. I think, Mr. Lepore, I admire you and I admire the spirit of this. I really do. But I think you did yourself and the people that you were trying to do this for a disservice by not coming to us tonight with substantive details about exactly, or as close to exact as possible, uh, how much money this is going to cost the town next year, the year after, and the year after that, and on, onward, and how the town, how you propose that the town balance the budget less that, 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 that the revenue. There's only so much revenue available. There's a pool, there's a bucket available, that everything has to be paid out of the bucket. And if now we're taking by estimates, half a million dollars out of the bucket that, that we use to just operate our functions and to do our, to have our town livable. Um, if we've taken a half a million dollars out of that, what does that mean? Does that mean that because we're giving that half million to a subset of the population, that another subset of the population now has to be levied heavier as a tax burden? That, that, that another population, potentially those that are 65 and younger, that make a certain amount of money, are going to have a heavier tax burden put upon them to compensate for the taxes we're giving back to the seniors that, are, that qualify by your standards? That's one thing. Um, how do we fund these tax exemptions? Do we uh, institute, do we start instituting fees? Do we start collecting, for tra uh, collecting payments for trash pickup and other fees that we're very proud in Wilmington that we do not have? I wouldn't support that. Uh, do we start cutting services? Do we start looking at the fire department and the police department and the rec department and the uh, uh, DPW and say, oh, well, we got one extra there, two extra there, three extra there, and if we start adding them all up and cut a few pink slips out, we can come up with $500,000 a year, every year, for the next indefinite years. You didn't come to us, or me anyway, with any kind of analysis or proposal. You, you kind of came, came to me with a big pile of of sticky stuff and you're throwing it against the wall and you're kind of hoping it's going to stick. And I could never support that and I would be very vocal against it until you had that kind of information for me to dig into. So that's what I wanted to say and I know that the, the motion is off the table here, but I had to go on record as having said all that. I love our seniors, I just, if we're going to provide benefit to the seniors, we need to do it in a substantive, thoughtful, anal analytical manner. We can't just throw it against the wall and hope the voters will see to it that, that it'll be taken care of. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <coughs> Mr. Chairman? I'd just like to ask Mr. Shampoo, we heard the budget, we heard the proposals. How much of that input did you call up and ask to, um, to appropriate? Did you add or take anything off this year's budget? I didn't. Did you make any phone calls? Did you know anything about the budget? Uh, no, I, I'll, I'll admit to uh, So being basically an what you just clarified to me that I didn't do is, is what you're asking me about a budget. It seems like nobody get, picks up the phone and asks what's on the budget. Well, the budget's presented. I mean, right. What's in that budget? When I say presented, I'm talking about proposals such as equipment, such as building maintenance, such as, um, you know. So actually, what I'm getting at, we can all talk about numbers. We can all talk about numbers. You, you can say it's going to cost $400,000, but guess what? You can't tell me yes or no that it is going to be 400000 Just as he said, he sat down, it's 200000 That's two years ago. I mean, we can all play the number game. I don't, want to, I don't want to debate you people about numbers. It's coming down to what you just discussed. You're asking, oh, younger people can't, you know, afford this and that. But it's funny. You mentioned the DPW. We need a new DPW building. Guess what that means? More money for taxes because we got to build more buildings in this town. Who's going to pay for it? You think the seniors can't pay now? Again, you mentioned schools. I believe an article last week, we want new updated ball fields. We want new turf. The seniors got to reach in their pockets some more for this that are on fixed incomes. On fixed incomes, I stress. Okay, we're talking about more new buildings. All right. What do we need? I mean, I'm getting calls already that, you know, possibly the Wildwood Street School is going to have to be taken care of eventually. It's getting old. The seniors are going to double dip. They already paid. 
I'm talking about people that are 70, 75 years old that not even can even drive. You're talking about a person who can work a second and third job. I'm hearing they've got to go for road tests. That's the people I'm looking to represent out of this article. But again, I can't take it any further. I'm not going to debate it. You asked me in the last minute. I mean, yes, this is what we pay people in the town hall to do. Six weeks, you can't come forward and get their numbers together. They did it to me back in 03. And again, it's numbers. Six weeks. <clears throat> again, you're talking about something that you want to take effect in fiscal year 2012. That we can plan. We, we are, <clears throat> like every community out there, still wrestling to make sure that we don't overestimate the amount of revenue that, that comes from local aid. Not to mention local receipts that are down because the economy is terrible and development's down and, and new business startups are down. The commercial industrial personal property tax, um, which is taking a beating in times like this when, when uh, Amatech gets rid of a bunch of people. I mean, th this is, if, if you're talking about the process then, and, you're, and you're serious about trying to do something that's going to have an effect on a segment of the population that you're trying specifically to serve, then bring it through the process to try and have as much information as there might be available. That's, that's my point. You, you literally, in my mind, couldn't do it for fiscal 2011. I mean, you, you'd literally have to generate a new source of revenue or to cut services or personnel from the current budget. So I consider it a positive development to start talking about 2012. But to be talking about 2012 in, in February, to me, doesn't make sense. Work, work through the process in the fall. I just want to make a quick comment. Ray, I really think what you have is a great idea, and I have no problem taking a look at it. But I think the bottom line is don't abandon it. I think where you want to bring it down in 2012, I think we should probably entertain it sometime in the fall, let it go through the process, let us really look at the real true numbers. And who knows, we can't look into a magic crystal ball, but maybe some of that stimulus money, instead of it going to Wall Street, may come to Town Hall Street. Yeah, you know, who knows what's going to happen in nine months from now. I'm saying this, so I don't think you should abandon it. I think if you're looking for 2012, put it on a course, put it on a time, time frame. Bring it back in the fall, take a look at it, we'll take a look at the hard numbers and you know, maybe it is doable, maybe it isn't, maybe it is. Who knows what's going to happen, but, you know, a lot's going to happen in the next six, nine months in this uh, country here relative to talking about another stimulus plan. I mean, I don't know what the heck they're talking about in Washington, D.C. All I know is what's happening here in town. And uh, something to look at, Ray. You know, I wouldn't abandon it. Just I think you should bring it back in the fall, take a look at it. And I think uh, there might be surprises in this thing. Who knows what's going to happen? Anything else? Yes. Uh, Mario, Mar oh, Mario Marquis, 5 Somerset. I'd just like to say conceptually I think Ray's got a great idea, and I echo the sentiment of, of Mr. McCoy that I think this should be thought about again. Uh, maybe an amendment to it or something like that to where if the town can't afford the budget that it gets reconsidered the next time with this extra free cash. Because I, I, as I recall, when the town manager presented this budget, he said we have cert certified free cash is 4.8. You know, he planned a 10% decrease in local aid. We're still, um, you know, um, on budget. They have the local aid comes in at the full receipts. They're going to have 5.1 million free cash. We're going to have a net increase of 300,000 uh, dollars. All I'm saying is that maybe this should be reconsidered to the fact that if our local aid comes in higher than what we budgeted, maybe that money could be appropriated to some types of savings for the seniors, something like that. I mean, I don't know what the exact number it is. I don't know what the exact answer is, but I think this is a great. It, it's. It's a good proposal, you know, it should be given some more thought and should just be completely abandoned. So that's all I would like to say. And, and I would just respond by saying that um, if somebody is going to advocate any measure like this, show me the money. Show, show, me, show me how much it's going to cost, where you're going to get the money, what sources of revenue are you going to consider that we don't currently enjoy receiving, and if you can't pay for it that way, Show me what positions you're going to cut. Mr. That's Chairman, I agree with you. I agree there should be some more research done, but you know, just to the sentiment, I, I think it's a, it, it's a good idea. And it, just, it, it shouldn't be abandoned. That's all. Yes, Mr. West. Yes. Frank West, Two Virgin Road. Uh, I also think that, you know, conceptually, I think Ray's got a great idea. 
Uh, I know each one of you, like you made the comment, Lou, that you know, no one cares more about the seniors than you. I think collectively, all of you care about the seniors in a collective fashion. Uh, and I will say that all of you work in some fashion with the seniors, either through your position within town government, or volunteer organizations that you're involved with, or the businesses that um, that you that you're all you know, you're most of your town businessmen as well. Uh, what I would like to see is, is that if maybe collectively you 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 want to do something for the seniors, instead of saying to Mr. Lapore, Selectman Lapore, you know, hey Ray, why don't you you know, great idea, bring something back in the fall. You know, why don't we see if we can get a commitment from from this board to do something collectively to uh, that could appease the seniors in some fashion. Again, it may not be you know the, the type of tax break that Mr. Lapore's work looking for or, or any of the seniors are looking for. But it might be a way to assist the seniors. Uh, I know Mr. Samaglia talked about the uh, the state tax break, the $500 tax break. I know a lot of the seniors choose not to take that for whatever reason. A lot of them do, but I know there's seniors in town that they say, you know what, I don't want that assistance because I don't need it. I'd rather have it in the pot for somebody else. And I think if you guys put some sort of a proposal together that didn't necessarily mandate that if somebody was 65, 70, whatever age, that they, they must take this tax break. But if they so choose to bring forth the, uh, you know, bring forth for the information, for the tax break, providing that they qualify for it, you know, maybe maybe raised numbers might be might, might be too high, maybe they might be tweaked, need to be tweaked. But again, the, the, there might be a way that collectively this board could work with the town manager, the town accountant, to get the, the hard numbers that, that you're looking for, well, that all of you are looking for, I should say, as well as the the the, uh, the burden on the town administration. Certainly, you know, Mr. Hull would be involved in that process, as well as all the department heads. So all I suggest is, is that I'd like to see that collectively you guys, you know, tell us either tonight or tell us in some formal way that you'd like to entertain some sort of a formal proposal. Maybe not ready for this town meeting, but certainly if there's a special in the fall or by next year, you know, we'd like to see a commitment that, that you guys collectively would be willing to entertain some sort of a, um, uh, a motion, uh, some sort of a warrant article drafted by the town, compromised by the Board of Selectmen, that would, uh, that would benefit the seniors, and certainly not take away from, as you said, Mr. Newhouse, the, the family that's, that's struggling to, to meet their expenses. Maybe there's a way that you could reduce that guesstimate figure of $500,000 to maybe a couple hundred thousand dollars. Maybe there's a way of doing that. Uh, you know yourself, I mean, a lot of seniors, if, if you give them a, a tank of oil, I know, I know several of you have, have been involved in that process, giving the seniors a tank of oil or, you know, or some sort of uh, behind-the-scenes type help, how grateful they are. So I don't think that, you know, you, necessarily, you don't necessarily have to give them thousands of dollars, per se, but even if, if there was a way that you could give them, maybe maybe match the state tax break of five hundred dollars. Maybe you could do something like that, or in some fashion, just you know, give them something. And, and I don't think that if you if you reduce that number down to say two hundred thousand dollars or so, again, you're still taken away from town services. But there might be a way collectively with between the five of you gentlemen, certainly Jeff being the assistant town manager, Mr. Kyra, and the other department heads within the community. It might be a way to, to come up with some sort of compromise. Bring it to town meeting, see if it works. And if it works, fantastic. If it, if it conceptually, just like the, the issue that, that we, the Minutemen, have talked about, if it fails, then you bring it up for a future town meeting and get it rescinded or amended. And, 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 but like I said, I think that collectively, you guys should be able to do something. If, if, if it's really, if, if the mind is willing to do something to benefit the scene is, but with also without overburdening any of the, any town service or any other resident. There might be ways to do that, maybe collectively, if you guys can look into it, and, and, and come back in formal session and tell, and tell the public that you have a warrant article to present a town meeting. Might be a lot watered down from what Mr. Lepore says, but it's something that would benefit. And, and I personally I applaud Mr. Lepore for, uh, for bringing such an action to the floor. Again, I understand that it wasn't in the format that you wanted, and, and it wasn't necessarily in the packet properly in, in, in all the administrative administrative criteria. But again, if you guys could work together, I think you could put something together. But I think we should have some sort of a, a commitment from the Board of Selectmen 
to at least investigate to see if something like that could be done. Mr. West, I, I, I know both because, um, because I, I know you and I know from the tenor of your comments, uh, you, you didn't intend to offend anybody with those comments. I'm not one that typically gets defensive. Um, but even knowing that you weren't trying to offend anybody and that I don't typically get defensive, I'm sitting here feeling myself getting defensive. And, and here's why. You, you, you talked about maybe, you know, you called on this board to do something to show seniors that we, we care about them and that we want to take care of them. And, and I took note of one specific <coughs> word you used. You used the word appease. And I got to tell you, I really enjoy being a selectman. I'm not here to appease anybody. I'm here to try and serve everyone. And you are a selectman. Uh, you know, I've been a selectman for a while. Everybody sitting up here has is, is, is been around for a while. Um, I do not see anything in this current year's budget, nor going back in time do I see anything in those budgets that would warrant this kind of a an expenditure. I don't care if we're talking 100 grand or 400 grand. I don't see that in our budget. I, I, I as I sit here, you, you call upon us to make some kind of commitment. What I can commit to doing is continuing to see to it that our professional management, first of all, engages in a conservative style of budgeting so that we don't overestimate revenues or underestimate expenses, which I believe the administration consistently has done for several years now. I believe that we continue to offer the services that we've provided for many years. I think we continue to provide more with less. I think our rank and file uh, town employees you know, we, we, we often refer to our department heads and the fine work that they do. Our rank and file employees, I recognize, are typically doing more with less. Not because we've given any pink slips. We all are fast to point that out. But there has certainly been attrition over the years. I, I, as, as, as fine a sentiment as that is, I cannot sit here and honestly tell you that I can take you up on your invitation to try and find a way to do something specifically for our seniors that we're not already doing. Because no matter how you cut the mustard, there's a limited amount of resources that we're trying to allocate amongst a number of different needs. And frankly, I believe in the balance that we've struck. I believe in what's going before town meeting voters. I, I don't, there's nothing in there that I would suggest we cut tomorrow. And there's no sources of revenue. Uh, like user free fees that I'd want to implement right now. So, you know, to, to constantly look at increased sources of revenue, to constantly look at cost-cutting measures as the town, I think, consistently has done, that's, in my mind, how I'm serving the seniors along with everybody else in this town, doing the best we can to maintain our services with the resources we have. So, so I just, uh, again, I, I didn't, I prefaced my comments because I know you weren't trying to be offensive, but I can't, I can't help it. I get defensive on that because I have been sitting in the seat for several budgets that have been presented to town meeting, budgets which by and large are viewed as responsible and disciplined and consistent, and they've garnered the support of town meeting. And, and I think that we're going to continue to do that regardless of whether or not I'm sitting at one of these seats. And, you know, I, I trust the, the other gentleman at this table and the, and the administration that we have. So, you know, I just have to say that I can't, I can't, you know, remain silent on an invitation like that and not be clear about where I'm coming from. And again, Mr. Chairman, briefly, I, I don't know, I'm not sure exactly what, what I meant that, what I said that could have come across as, as uh, uh, derogatory. No, please, and, nothing you okay. said, I don't think okay. anything you said was. And, and, and I wasn't looking to do that. Uh, maybe something that the board could do that wouldn't cost e basically any money would be maybe a way to better inform the citizenry, especially the seniors, of various benefits that they may be entitled to they may not, that they may not realize. You know, I'll give you an example. And again, I, I don't mean to pick on Lou, but I know the prior veterans agent probably didn't do 
half the work that, as a veterans agent, that Mr. Samaglia does in exploring various benefits and uh, services that the veterans can, can give. And I'm certain that there are, there are benefits within the, the state and federal aid and local aid or something like that, that maybe, maybe the, the, there could be a better outreach for those who may want that outreach. You know, and again, I don't know that. But I know that there must be ways, there should be ways out there that at least we can better inform people that are in need of aid, especially some of those that they don't know how to ask the questions. And maybe that's, maybe that's something that could be. Could yeah, I, I didn't, um, no, I'm just going to say that the senior center and the senior department that we have in town here with Terry Marciello is second to none. And I know she does a lot of outreach. We all work together with the nurse and the Board of Health and the Senior Center and the Department of Veteran Services. We're constantly working with each other, so no, we try no, um, nobody slips through the cracks. Oh, I'm not, uh, I, I, and, and like you said, I, I understand outreach is, is key. You know, I think they're doing the outreach again. I'm, I'm defending the town and the department. I, I think that the senior department in this town is second to none. Well, I, I don't mean that anyone's not doing their job. I, 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 again, I'm not looking to have it taken in that fashion. All I'm just saying is, is that maybe there are other ways to outreach that we're not seeing. You know, maybe, I don't know, I, I'll, I'll just pick on maybe if there's a way to go to, that the town administrations in some fashion could could go to instead of the senior center, maybe there's, there's a, a church group or, or some other avenue that, that some people that, gee, I didn't know I qualified for this $500 state tax re rebate. I, I thought it was real complicated that I needed to fill out 50 papers and show my tax returns for the last eight years. You know, some, I'm just saying there's, there, there may be simple ways that might help even a few of the people that are out there. That's all I'm saying. And, and certainly, I, I know and I've worked with Terry for many years. I, I think that the senior citizens, my, my mother for years was a, was a long-standing member of the seniors. And, and I think that the, the people down there do a wonderful job. And, and I'm, not, I'm not decrying of anything that, that anyone in this town is doing today. But I'm just saying that there are other avenues that maybe haven't been explored for whatever reason. Local cable access TV or, or, or maybe outreach nights or something. I, I don't know. But I'm just saying there might be ways that we can, under, with no cost to the town or little cost to the town, if that, that we could just find avenues for people that may not know the avenues that are out there. Just simple suggestion. Thank you. We all set? Okay. Thank you. Okay, our next uh, scheduled appointment uh, for 745 is a review of annual town meeting warrant articles submitted by petition. And um, the board here has a memorandum uh, which lists all of those uh, warrant articles and uh, has a couple of notations. Perhaps, uh, Mr. Hull, you could, um, are you more comfortable reading them or characterizing them? How, how are you comfortable handling them? As long as we're getting <clears throat> the information out, I'm fine. I can just highlight uh, what we, uh, what okay. we have. Okay, we could take them up in the order that they're presented, just to let the public know what's what's included in the list of petition articles. Uh, the first petition article is presented by uh, Vito and Maria uh, Cicerone, and this is uh, to purchase town-owned land, uh, map 69, parcel 69. It's on Cherry Street. Uh, this would go through the... Um, the, the process that uh, has been well established. Uh, uh, the uh, individuals who are petitioning would have an opportunity at the uh, public hearing uh, coming up on March 16th to uh, present their uh, case in terms of uh, seeking this property. Uh, there's a property review board that's chaired by uh, Carol Hamilton. Uh, and it's uh, comprised of uh, several department heads, uh, the town engineer, and some of the assistants. Uh, that group then reviews the uh, merits of the request and makes a recommendation to the town manager. And then he ultimately uh, will make a, a determination as to whether the property is deemed to be surplus. Uh, so that's the first article. Uh, there's a street acceptance a request for a... Um, uh, street acceptance under the Betterman Act for Waltham Street. It was originally submitted by Sandra Curtin uh, with appropriate signatures. That article uh, has been withdrawn uh, with, again, the appropriate required signatures. Uh, the third article is submitted by John and Linda 
uh, Dubosian, and this is a request to relinquish easement rights uh, on Marion Street Extension. Uh, years ago, the town had uh, had uh, obtained these easement rights as a means to allow for a bus turnaround, uh, given that Marion Street uh, is now connected all the way through. There's no uh, need for that. Um, at least the town uh, does not believe there's a need for that uh, easement, uh, but that is the request that the uh, homeowners uh, are making uh, there. Uh, there's a uh, request by uh, John Brown, firefighter with the Wilmington Police Department, to accept Mass General Law Chapter 48, se Section 571, uh, which would grant paid leave to elected officers in the Professional Firefighters Union. Uh, there's two articles submitted by Craig uh, Newhouse. Uh, the first is to purchase town-owned land uh, on Mary and Stanley Streets, map six, parcels 139, 140, 141, 142, 143, and 144. Again, that would uh, have go a similar route to the earlier um, requests that I referenced where it would be brought up uh, at the uh, March uh, public hearing and then be evaluated by the Property Review Committee. Uh, there's a second request from Mr. Newhouse, town-owned, well, uh, property at uh, Map 6, Parcel 20. Uh, that property is actually not uh, owned by the town and it will, uh, I presume, be dealt with appropriately at uh, town meeting. Uh, and then we have a series of articles uh, brought forward by Kevin McDonald. Uh, the first is uh, to uh, require the posting of town employees who are receiving uh, pensions from the town of Wilmington uh, in addition to their salary. Uh, the second is a uh, request to establish uh, that food donations uh, in lieu of library fines uh, be issued year-round. Uh, the third is the elimination of the water superintendent position. And the fourth is the investigation uh, of the comprehensive water study, which was done uh, a few years ago, the CWRMP, which is a comprehensive evaluation of the town's uh, water needs. Uh, the final uh, article that was uh, put forward uh, is uh, put forward by uh, Mark Nelson seeking to amend and update the uh, official map. Uh, that uh, request was submitted. The uh, town clerk, uh, in reviewing the uh, signatures, uh, has indicated that it uh, did not meet the requirement in terms of the minimum number of signatures. Uh, uh, Mr. Newhouse has, I'm, I'm sorry, Mr. Uh, Nelson has um, contested that, so at this point it's being evaluated by town council. Uh, and that constitutes the um, uh, full slate of petitioned articles. I would just add, we certainly will go through important dates later, but for anyone who just heard that list and is interested in any one or more of those items, uh, on March 16th, uh, which is a Tuesday night, at a joint meeting of the Planning Board and Finance Committee, the uh, petitioners would have the opportunity, if they so desire, to outline um, <coughs> the substance and purpose behind all of those various petitions. <coughs> any questions uh, from the board on any of that stuff? Not at this time. Okay. We could resume with communications. Uh, the first. Uh, the next item under communications is a memorandum to the board uh, with regard to additional revenue sources available to the town. Uh, at the board's last meeting, a request was made to examine the alternative sources of revenue that may be available to the town in the event fiscal year 2011 local aid distributions were less than anticipated. As the board is aware, the town has presented a balanced budget for fiscal year 2011 based upon its estimate of a 10 percent decrease in revenue from 2010 Chapter 70 in general municipal aid accounts. The board asked for information pertaining to other categories of revenue available to the town, but not taken advantage of by the town. Specifically mentioned were user fees and local option taxes. 
The board asked that to the extent possible, a survey of nearby communities be conducted to determine their implementation of such fees or taxes. As, a, as requested, the focus is on new sources of revenue as opposed to increasing revenue from current sources. The only local option taxes available to Wilmington would be from a rooms tax or meals tax. The town has voted to accept the enabling statute by which it could collect the maximum legal local room occupancy excise of 6% in the event a hotel motel inn uh, were located in Wilmington. There are no such facilities in Wilmington at, uh, at this time. The town also has the option of adopting a local options meal excise by accepting General Law Chapter 64L, Section 2A. A majority vote at the town meeting is required to accept the statute. The community's acceptance of the local meals excise becomes operative on the first day of the next calendar year after the vote, provided that date is at least 30 days after the vote to accept. For example, if a Warren article was adopted at the May 1, 2010 annual town meeting, the operative date would be July 1, 2010. Following enactment of the statute in 2009, the state provided communities with an estimate of revenue assuming local adoption of the law by August 31, 2009. In effect, the estimate would be for nine months of the fiscal year. For Wilmington, the estimate was $196,370. Projecting that number annually would result in an estimated source of revenue of approximately $261,800. According to the Division of Local Services of the Department of Revenue, 72 communities have adopted the local options meals excise at 0.75%. Uh, attached as a list of those communities which, as you might expect, include Boston, Cambridge, Somerville, Springfield, and Worcester. And attached uh, for the board's consideration uh, is a listing of a number of communities, including uh, all of our neighboring communities, uh, indicating those communities that have uh, adopted uh, the uh, meals tax, uh, the effective dates, uh, and the estimated uh, amount of money uh, that it generates. Um, uh, also, there's uh, information here about uh, fees that uh, many of our neighboring communities have adopted, uh, sports fees, activities fees, bus fees, uh, full-day kindergarten assessments. Um, and uh, I think that pretty much covers it. A lot of information there. Thank you. Any questions or comments at this time? Hearing none. Uh, the next uh, item under correspondence is a letter from uh, Mr. Uh, David Plunkett, who is the chairman of the planning board in uh, Tewksbury. Uh, this is with respect to uh, the proposed I-93 interchange. Uh, in summary, on December 21, 2009, the Tewksbury Planning Board held a public hearing to reaffirm no access uh, to the existing west side local road network for a proposed I-93 interchange. There is nothing in the existing record to suggest that there is a change in the town's opposition to a connection of the proposed new I-93 interchange to existing west side local roads. Uh, and he continues on uh, from there. Yes. Just make a quick comment on mm -hmm. that. I find that interesting. And first of all, I totally agree with uh, Mr. Plunkett, I believe what is he, the uh, chairman of the Tewksbury Planning Board. Mm -hmm. we, we were talking about this for years, and I've served on this board for a long time about no access to local roads. And I find it interesting the newly elected selectman in Tewksbury is now discussing the fact that maybe we should look at options to open up the local uh, roads in order for this uh, to go through. I think it would be kind of unfortunate for the town of Wilmington to veto what the selectmen in Tewksbury want to do relative to opening those roads. I mean, I think they should be consistent of what the residents in that area for years. Uh, Senator Kennedy, they were talking about no local roads being open in, Representative Maselli, Senator Tucker, Representative Feingold. But all of a sudden, it's interesting that the discussion's coming forward about maybe opening those roads. I just bring that out there. I just think 
those individuals elected in Tewksbury should realize, take care of their own community and to be consistent with what the planning board wants to do. We're trying to do our part. I remember saying all three communities, Andover, Wilmington, and Tewksbury, we all got to work together and to make sure that we try to keep this uh, project from uh, going on to local access. And they don't want to open up local roads. And I just find it just ironic enough that that we see this, and I would hope that Mr. Shampoo uh, would keep us uh, abreast of what's going on down there, because especially when Tewksbury want to try to open up uh, South Street, uh, the, uh, from, from what I'm hearing, uh, the newly elected selectman down there, I just find it mind-boggling that he would even consider doing something like that. Well, I, I'll speak to it very briefly. Uh, there was, uh, I was at the meeting where this uh, newly elected selectman said, wow, we should do that, because there was a presentation made by I forget who which of the uh, the consultants, and they were looking at one of a number of hypothetical connection scenarios, which is their duty to look at multiples, and um, and it was not a this is the recommended scenario. It was one of the possible hypotheticals that could could fit into that 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 space, and as part of that hypothetical scenario, one of the uh, uh, screens or one of the slides that they presented was potential revenues or, or, you know, if an access to local roads may generate uh, new revenues by virtue of X, Y, and Z. And so this new selectman, I think, saw saw dollar signs potentially for the town of Tewksbury and got excited about that. But I want to kind of bring down the temper a little bit. Um, that presentation was not ever to say there will be local road connections. This was a hypothetical one of, I think, nine that will be presented ultimately and the Federal Highway and State Highway are very sensitive to and aware of Tewksbury's long-standing opposition to that. So uh, as I said at one of our, my, our last meetings, this is constantly evolving. Um, but uh, yeah, it, it, I will certainly keep you apprised of, of what's happening in Tewksbury as I hear it. Okay, thank you. Uh, the next item is a uh, correspondence from the Massachusetts Municipal Association. Uh, this is with regard to uh, legislation that is being proposed. It's actually uh, House Bill 2509. Uh, just in brief, communities are being crushed under the burden of skyrocketing health costs, coupled with last year's $724 million local aid cut. Municipalities across the state are facing a deep fiscal crisis. It's time to provide real reform and savings to cities, towns, and local taxpayers by giving local government the same plan design authority the state has set for health insurance plans. Uh, it's asking the uh, town to contact its legislative delegation uh, to pass House 2509, uh, MMA's plan to give cities and towns the power to update municipal health insurance plans outside of collective bargaining, which is what the state uh, government currently does, it would est it's estimated it would save cities and towns 75 to $100 million. I, I think this is probably the, one of the most significant um, pieces of legislation in terms of fiscal relief that could be uh, passed. Right now, uh, any, any changes that we make whatsoever to health insurance design, whether it's changing deductibles, uh, changing co-pays, uh, become a, a process for collective bargaining, which is just a very a difficult process. Uh, the state, uh, which has its own employees, uh, can take those actions um, on their own without the requirement of collective bargaining. So this would be incredibly uh, helpful to cities and towns. The um, next piece of correspondence is from the Massachusetts Water Resources Authority uh, relative to uh, the fiscal 2011 uh, assessments. Last Wednesday, uh, the MWRA board, board of Directors voted to transmit the preliminary fiscal 2011 community water and sewer assessments to the MWRA Advisory Board for their review and comment. Uh, and to essentially uh, just focus on Wilmington, um, the assessment which we had anticipated was going to uh, go up uh, much more steeply on the sewer side is, est is uh, actually uh, going to be decreasing by about 1.2 percent. Uh, current number is 1,985,771. Uh, the estimated uh, preliminary number is 1,962,929. Uh, and then because we are um, a, a recent partial water community, we will see a, 
um, uh, a small assessment on the water side, which is about $100,000. This correspondence is from the um, Massachusetts uh, House Historical Commission uh, from uh, Brona uh, Simon, the State Historical Preservation Officer. Uh, we're pleased to inform you that the Butters Avery House, Wilmington, Massachusetts, will be considered by the Massachusetts Historical Commission for nomination to the National Register of Historic Places. The National Register of Historic Places is the federal government's official list of historic properties worthy of preservation. Listing in the National Register provides recognition and assists in the preservation of our na nation's heritage. Listing of this property provides recognition of the community's important historic resources and uh, assures protective review of the federal projects that might adversely affect the character of, of the property. If the property is listed on the National Register, certain federal investment tax credits for rehabilitation and other pre uh, preservation uh, provisions may apply. Uh, this would also uh, if it is uh, listed on the National Register, automatically puts it on the State Register as well. And as you know, we're in the process of uh, working for uh, working with um, a contractor to do some uh, rehabilitation there. The contract uh, was just issued last week, so we should be underway in, the, in a matter of a couple of weeks here. Uh, this next correspondence is from uh, Comcast, uh, starting February 12th, 2010, Comcast is changing the name of its uh, video, internet, and voice products in Wilmington to uh, Xfinity TV, Xfinity Internet, and Xfinity Voice. Xfinity represents Comcast's tremendous investment in our network and products to offer our subscribers more HD, more speed, more choices, and more control than ever before. Our customers can enjoy the best entertainment and communications choices whenever they want, wherever they are, and however they want. Uh, so they're changing their name. <laughs> uh, and we have a request here from the uh, from Deborah Cipriani, who's the recreation director, uh, directed to the uh, chairman. On behalf of the Wilmington Recreation Commission, I am requesting permission to conduct the annual Easter egg hunt on the town common on Saturday, April 3rd, 2010, at 2 p.m. Uh, this fun family event is a sight to behold. Volunteers will blanket the town common with candy and fill, filled eggs. Hundreds of children will circle the perimeter of the common and will rush to fill the Easter eggs once the starting signal is given. We cordially invite the members of the board to uh, join the festivities as spectators or volunteers. Volunteers should be at the town common by 1 p.m. In the event of rain or poor uh, ground conditions, the event will be held at the high school cafeteria. This event is traditionally an overwhelming success. With your support, we look forward to continuing this time-honored event. So when the signal goes off, get stand back. <laughs> <laughs> Questions, comments, or a motion? Is there any conflict with the Minutemen on that day on the bus? <laughs> Not that I'm aware of. Any other questions? I trust the children won't be wearing any kind of cleats or anything. <laughs> I would move that we authorize the uh, use of the common uh, for the Recreational Department's annual Easter egg hunt on uh, April 3rd. Maybe seconded. Anything further? All in favor? It's unanimous. Public comments. Any public comments tonight? Seeing none. Uh, new business committee reports. Anyone? I'd just like to mention at the last meeting, the, um, the World War II memorial boards were brought up, and there was one at the Hardin Tavern. Hmm. And they moved it to the Department of Veteran Services. It's not one of the, the big ones that was outside that they were talking about, but it is, it's a good size one, and there's uh, a little over 280 names on it. So we're going to be cataloging that and make sure that is all the names or as much of the names that were served. And, um, I believe it's the one that the graduate, the graduate, the graduates of Wilmington High School are on this one, the small honor roll one that's okay. in the uh, Department of Veterans Office right now. Gotcha. We'll keep you informed on that. Hmm. Thank you. Uh, I just have an item that uh, I thought was worthy of note. Um, I had indicated at the outset of the meeting that uh, the manager is not available tonight because of family commitments, and he. Uh, specifically asked him if I could share this. Um, folks may have read in the press that um, Michael Kyra's son, Brian, 
uh, is giving a first lecture, and he, he was supposed to give a quote-unquote first lecture on Wednesday, Wednesday, February 10th, which was um, rescheduled because of snow and then rescheduled because of threat of snow or one or the other. Um, but it ended up being tonight, and um, uh, just I think it's a, a nice uh, note to make. Uh, this first lecture is to be delivered by a student at Merrimack College in the same way that the last lecture is given by a professor. Uh, as such, it is an opportunity for a student to speak in a formal and disciplined fashion about what, it, what matters most to him or her at this point in his or her life. It will offer the college community the <coughs> opportunity to hear publicly about one of its students' real passions, deep beliefs, and guiding wisdom, as well as his or her dreams, hopes, and values. So I thought I would share that. Um, certainly one of those things that um, uh, we would expect uh, the manager not to be here as uh, you know, I would expect to attend that as well if I were in issues. So I thought it was a nice story to share. Mm -hmm. Anything down here? That's it. Okay. Important dates. Uh, the important dates, uh, we have uh, February 23rd is the next Finance Committee meeting. Um, meeting starts at 7 o'clock right here in Room 9. Um, February 25th, again, a Finance Committee meeting, uh, same time, 7 p.m. in Room 9. Uh, and then uh, March 2nd, Finance Committee meeting, uh, 7 p.m., Room 9. Uh, March 4th, the Junction Route 93 Development Area Task Force meeting, Memorial Hall Library, Elm Square in Andover, uh, starts at 8 a.m. Uh, March 16th, the Finance Committee and Planning Board joint public hearing relative to the warrant for the annual town meeting uh, will be held here at the auditorium, uh, starts at 7 p.m. That do we have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. Made a second. Anything further? All in favor? Unanimous.